So you are sitting in the edges of the ice lodge next to a dead mammoth and a large dead Beating wolf. It. And uh, a voice of the other wolf comes down the corridor. Uh, well, uh, I see you seem to have sorted your differences out, so I'm just going to go now and uh, leave you to it. No hard feelings, I hope. <laughs> Uh, uh, so up. Where's the kid? Uh, I don't know. I, I I'm just going to go. They're in there somewhere. Uh, no, you're not. Unless you want to be riddled full of holes, I suggest you come in here and help us look. I, I don't feel particularly safe. I have a horrible feeling <clears throat> you're just going to kill me. If you don't come in here, I'll come out there and I will kill you. Okay, so the uh, because we don't have enough mad shit, mad shit in the party, the uh, the, the winter wolf Kenan comes in uh, looking a little sheepish, a black fur, glowing blue eyes. Now, now look, mush. All we need you to do is help us find the kid. Once we've done that, you can be on your way. Can you unlock Bracy, please? <laughs> you say that like I have him tied up somewhere well just saying oh yeah that's what, what again I, that's what i need to do i need to put adam the combat tracker the wolf's quite big compared to me isn't it uh oh, yeah God. they are gigantic these uh oh. wolves the um, size of of ornies. these do not look like your average wolf um how can, about... I, can i give it some of my rations and just pat it um <laughs> Oh no! Give it some mammoth meat. It's it's me new mount, and then it will alleviate some um, weight on the sleigh, won't it? Ah, uh, it sees the state of Norso and says, uh, "Well, who Norso? He was a uh, he was driven mad. Driven mad he was. What drove him mad? The death of uh, the death of Garagi there. <coughs> Aye, and uh, what part did you play in that? Oh no, no, all there was a bunch of adventurers came and uh, the, the great sun heroes came along and, and chopped them up, and then Norsu drove them off. The great sun heroes, who were they? You know, adventuring types. Yeah, and when when did this uh, miraculous event take place? Oh, it was. Uh, few weeks ago we've got some pretenders guys going around yeah well either that or nobody has been able to come into Icewind deal for the last two years and nobody yeah. else has mentioned other adventuring parties uh, there, ha- gone? there has been a few there was the ones that were killed up the mountain the the adventuring parties that you have heard of don't seem to have been terribly successful. Which yeah. there's not a paladin in that other party, is there? <laughs> I don't. Uh, turned, turned his back on his belief. Are we going to have to hunt that other party down? Where, where's that wolf? That'll be gone? interesting. It's uh, over there talking to. It's standing Lantesh. right next to Lantesh. Can anybody see the wolf? Ah, yeah, yes, yes. I, I, I yeah, could, but I'll then it disappeared in that sight again now. Making it calm. It's all right. Nobody's going to kill you if you just help with. It looks oh. confused um, as to why you're not killing it, but it will gratefully accept your, your dried fish. I will cast message on it and say in its head, be very nice to her. Yeah, I like that bit. Be nice to her. She's probably keeping you alive. Um, How far away is our sleigh, travel-wise? Well, how far would you have parked it away? It was parked at the village. I thought have you just there. left it there and, and yomped it across there? If I remember rightly, we did. It's a couple hours' walk away. Right, it's a couple hours' walk away. Well, uh, um, can I send a telepathic message or a goblin leader to bring the sleigh to us and I'll give them direct telepathic? I'm not sure where it's got the range. It's, do you have to check it? Um, unlimited range. Wow, Jesus Christ, that's not overpowered or anything. Good job, that's got no uh, downside to it, isn't it, Dave? <laughs> Because like everything in Iceland, Dale, it's uh, it's just a, a freebie, isn't it? Davy, is it a cross Holy line shit. or is it go- or is it quite is a you know the party line, line there? Is a party, party line? line. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. You can yeah, you contact uh, Yab Ganok and he says, okay, okay, I'll uh, I'll bring it over. Uh, you left Bob there with them as well, didn't you? To keep an eye on the place. Yeah. So this guy is terrified because there's a strange talking mummy. Um, five goblins, five drunken goblins in the back of this sled. You might. I'll turn around and say, we might want to tell Bob not that they're not stealing the sled and not to turn them all to mush as well. I'll tell Bob that we need a sled brought up to us. Very good. Uh, the, uh, the wolves do seem to be getting more used to me, I must admit. See, they, they, uh, it's, it's warming on them. It's the fact that we sometimes <laughs> festoon them in meat so they can eat out of his hand. So as you look around this oval room, there's the frozen corpse of the giant that doesn't appear to have anything on him. A giant ice throne with a rune inscribed upon it, an Exits to the north and to the west. Um, let's check north first, I think, and then head west. Yeah, yeah, our then Wolfie, use your nose, find the kids. <clears throat> um, he, he says uh, Norsu took them out the back to the west there. All right, that's where we're going, like the other yeah. west, the other north. The, we've got the other north. So heading across the uh, and across the room behind the gigantic throne, uh, you see oh. a wide twenty a twenty foot wide tunnel with thirty foot high ceilings, which heads to the west. You re- you reckon this is like a lozenge ship and. Uh, 
And as you head along, there's a dead end with an opening to the south. There. Wait for me. Where's that bloody wolf? He's up there, Ruff. He's up there. All right. He's, he's hanging around with Lantesh. Lantesh, make friend. <laughs> that's, that's all we need is a, a mad totem wolf as well, isn't it? Well, why not? We've got everything else weird and dangerous. We've yeah. got a talking uh, sea monster, talking, you know, animals just talk. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we are. I'll turn around and say, actually, we should drop in on the sea monster. We haven't got some fish for a while. I'll turn around to the wolf and go, you like fish? Uh, yeah, yeah. Any, any, anything, basically. Either. If we can get our teeth into around here. Have you ever thought of life as an adventurer? Uh, no, not really. No, they uh, tend to try and eat us and skin us. Ah, he, well, he looks uh, over his shoulder. We've got a nice house. At Corin. We've got a nice house where you can actually, you know, settle down. It'll be warm, plenty of food. And all we're asking in return is for you to you know god the the inn the 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 building that we've got there uh, and well, you'll be safe well I'll, I'll certainly think about it uh right you, you oh, enter yeah, in, into this large room and the only furniture in this cavernous chamber is a big fur bedroll the fur is matted and musty right andy if you're going to be skinning this mammoth the problem is going to be it's very quickly gonna freeze completely solid so you'll need some weight to stop it freezing because it does take it takes two hours to uh, skin something that large and as you right well i'll tell you what i'll tell you what um let them go off exploring i'll go back to where the mammoth is uh, <coughs> uh and i shall uh, i'll get skinning Okay. Yeah. But I'll uh, I'll I'll light a campfire. Sort of if you like if the if the mammoth's lying on its side, I'll light a campfire sort of in front of where it's uh, where its guts will come out when I open it up. Yes. And that should try and sort of keep the cavity warm and I shall try and work quickly but precisely. Okay. Me, Fair enough. Me and Lantesh should be able to help once we finish searching the place. Because we can, as you're cutting, we can warm the area in front of the cut. It might be enough to defrost if you can get the blade. Much cut. appreciated. Right, so as you come around the corner, um, you see the gigantic bedroll, and uh, Dave has gone slightly ahead. Dave, you <coughs> see a, the head of you, uh, a collapsed wall, and beyond the wall is a large cage, and in the cage is the small, uh, emaciated view of the children. But the room you're in... Uh, has a large circular hole in the floor. Uh, the f- it's smooth ice all the way down, and uh, a foul scent pervades the room. And there mm. are five large barrels. Um, are the kids at the bottom more like? No, you can see ahead of you a giant cage, Dave, just at the edge of your sight. You should be able to. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a collapsed wall, and on the other side is a large cage. A huge slatted animal cage uh, stands before you. Um, it's got a heavy iron lift-up gate on one side. Trapped inside the cage are two shivering humanoid children in cold weather clothing. They look fearfully at you. I'll tell them that the mom sent us for them to rest. Finn and Silja. Um, they cower back terribly. Uh, and um, After a few moments of you speaking carefully to them, they uh, they seem to calm down and come forward. When We're not strong enough to lift the gate up. Basically, the whole west side of the cage is one large, heavy gate. And it's got like, uh, it looks like it's got extra weights at the bottom, making it difficult to lift. Obviously, an elephant with its trunk would have no problem. The rest of you come into the room, seeing the the glass smooth hole and the five large barrels. And it smells pretty bad in here. I have the feeling that that hole is a privilege. Could be. I'll turn around to Wolfie and go, any idea what that is? Point at the hole. He sniffs it and goes, no, but it smells bad. Yeah, I'll have a look at these barrels. What's in them? Right, um, You look inside the barrels and they look to be barrels of whale oil. Oh, that's a lot of expensive whale oil in very large fun barrels. Yeah, whale oil um sells for quite a quite a few gold pieces those barrels have a weigh 500 pounds each oh if we only had someone to drag what well, all we, we do and then when he drag well, we have a plan rich oh, all time. You, you have a plan all good so this is Lost the situation breaking. and he's whistling through his teeth as he hacks away at the mammoth um i like the torch and drop it down the hole and take a look down the hole uh, the hole goes down maybe about 30 feet but it doesn't go straight down uh it goes down at an angle leading to the south does it smell like shit um no well, then but again, it smells free. bad I'll turn like on. death like decayed bodies no it's an unusual um sickly sweet smell that you've never smelled before right i'm not gonna drop the torch down i'll turn around <coughs> the kids and say do you know what's in the hole no no that was there when when, when the, the big elephant brought us in and did no has no one been near it since no they just walked around it okay um 
Where's Brit? I've lost Bracey. I can't see he's talking. Well, no, I roll right. down and have a look down if you want. Well, let's get the kid yeah. out first. Uh, Silja yeah. is a spindly girl with pointy teeth and snow clings to her lungs, braids. And Finn has a piebald <sighs> face flanked by small malformed ears. I'll pour a blanket around them, try and warm them up and give them something to eat and drink. Well, betw- the- between the, the, the two... the two strong boys they can lift the cage up uh, with with difficulty uh, sweat being in their foreheads uh, enough so that the two kids can slip right, let's get them wrapped up safe we've got a lay coming for us in a couple of hours oh awesome so the, the guy that has done this conversion one hasn't bothered giving them a graphic two hasn't bothered marking them as not enemies so like presumably you're going to just slaughter these kids <laughs> well, we'll have to check them for loot next week at this point, Rich. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Right, so. Bring uh, them in here, stick them on the pile, I'll skin them later. One looks <laughs> like an F, and the <laughs> other one looks like an S. Uh, and, but they do come out uh, like the other residents of Dougal Hall. They don't look quite as weird as the other ones you've met, but they definitely look like they're on the way. Right, let's search the bedroll and then search. Let's search the, all the rooms. We'll take like 20 minutes and just search the crap out of this place before we head down the north passage. But I, uh, I just want to be careful of that hall. I am tempted to send someone down, but you know. Oh, Bruce is not here. He'll not well, be missed. True. But if only we had a pair of eyes that we could look through. Well, I'm going to say, uh, two people oh, have. Wait a minute. Two people have flying. Um... I was about to say, I've just realised I've got my owl alive. I'll send my owl down and have a look. Uh, we have the owl and the bat. Right, so your, your owl flies down and the tunnel curves in a U shape that appears outside to the south, hidden behind a snowbank. It's partially filled in, so he can't fly the, completely outside. But it looks like whatever is drilled this hole, it's all smooth on the inside. However, mm. at the bottom of the hole, there is a congealed substance. Tell it to avoid um, it. There's a frosted white residue smeared across a five foot section of wall. Mm. Well, who's, who's the owl? CSI Hedwig. Yeah. <laughs> so CSI Hedwig it's flies Columbo. down. Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, superb. Love it. I love his mask. Right, uh, we can get back to that if it's an issue, because we can get that from the outside since we know where it comes out, so we don't need to go down the death of tunnel of death. Um, let's oh, Earl, search. Earl, you wound me, honestly. What? You wound me. You think what? that everything in Icewind Dale's out to kill you? It is. I've, oh, I, uh, I said to him earlier today, oh, let's play that, we're, we're going to play that game where you die tonight again. Oh, I know, that. It's, 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 I'm becoming a meme. Uh, right, search his bedroll, search these rooms, and then we'll go up and help Andy. Right, the bedroom it, bedroll is stiff and frozen, as if it hasn't been used for a long time. Um, and in fact, the uh, the quality of it is is in such low uh, state that it, the the fur and the hide wouldn't be used for anything. In. There's nothing else you find in the room other than the barrels of whale oil. Okay, let's head down the north passage down there. Yeah, you know, uh, in fast water, because I can't drag you through walls anymore. Uh, you see Andy in the corner blowing on his hands. Just uh, him the in no- the corner. There's a, no- a passageway at the north, and uh, the room opens to the right and to the left. I'll have a look to the left. Right. So, to the left, a massive table hewn from a single block of ice stands in the middle of this cold chamber, surrounded by chairs also made of ice. As you step into the room. I've lost Bracey again. You didn't drop drop them down the hall, did you? I don't think so. He just keeps walking on. I mean, it's possible. Uh, Bracey's all the way back there with the kids. Where you, where you got the kids with you? Yeah. You've, oh, lo- you've lost Bracey because Bracey's character doesn't have a light and you can't see. Right, we'll put the what? two kids with... Yeah, the fire, Andy, the campfire uh, with that. Yeah, yeah, with Toss Cobble. And Bracey will light a torch. Yeah, he's just a quick one in his inventory. Yeah, so Bracey's character can't actually see in the dark, as neither can Andy. Well, the, the, the kids can, can sit next to me, little campfire and keep warm, and I'll I'll feed them rations if they're hungry. I should have a torch equipped now. Right. So you uh, stare into this room and uh, see a giant table, like uh, uh, some kind of meeting room. Yeah, I'll have a look around. I just right. want to make sure there's nothing hiding in here, and then we'll <laughs> search it. There doesn't seem to be anything hiding in here, but under the table you see a small statuette about one foot tall of a spindly creature that you recognise as the image of a twinger. Oh, then twinger statue. I'll point the twinger suit. Ah, I'll examine. It indeed looks like a little twinger. It doesn't have its little coat of pine needles on. 
and it is perfectly detailed in every way. Uh, you do notice that it apparently has even got some uh, small, <coughs> sharp teeth marks carved intricately into the side of it. I wonder if a Twinger got attacked and turned itself to stone so it didn't die. Or it looked at something that turned it to stone. Oh, shit, yes, it could have looked at something that turned it to stone. Oh, we're still looking around, aren't we? Oh, yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you get all the way around the other end of the room as uh, this thought strikes you. Right, I'll jog <sighs> to keep myself warm back to where everyone is. Oh, yeah, yeah, just to keep yourself warm, I understand. Look down that corridor with my eyes closed. <laughs> Have you still got the polished is plates? That's what I think it is. That is uh, what appears to be the sour stench of decay fills your nostrils. Lying on the ice pack ground is the frozen corpse of a whale crudely butchered. Beside it is an axe, like stuck in its side, is an axe the size of a battle axe, but to a giant it will be like a little hatchet. You couldn't check to see if that's magic, could you please, uh, Lantesh? Certainly. Um, Pass to check magic. Is that a ritual? Bring the uh, yes. With us. Right, so she stands there, pulls out the chalk and the incense and the candles and says, just give us ten minutes. I'm not going to get too close to them for things. Like- so as you walk around the corner there, in the <clears throat> alcove of this room mm-hmm. is a five foot long, sorry, six foot long, five foot wide, five foot tall stone chest half buried under the ice. Ooh, we ch- last. It looks like it would take some time to chip away at the ice <clears throat> holding it closed, unless you just want to start blasting it. Mr. George, what sort of a... Yeah, I'm going to blast it. No. Uh, 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 right. Let me think on this. So as you walk around, you see basically this wheel that's been partially butchered is now literally frozen solid if you watch that video i posted it's just like it's like concrete now oh goody where's that treasure chest thing did you see it's in this alcove uh it's alcove here in fact there, from where i move all right the other one right i'll head Check down for to... traffic, for tra- i will search that oh what's this whoa 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 found another exit what's yeah if you remember when you came in there was an exit there was two exits, the middle one and the north one. Right, I'll have a peek down here. Okay. I'm going to go off ahead, which means I'm going to die, because Tracy seems to think that's <coughs> all I do. I'd hate to disappoint. You've got some lemon in your jeans, I'll tell you. It's lemon. So, so uh, Dave, you are searching the chest for traps, which means you're back here. Right, you search the... You can't search the chest itself because it's coated in ice. But f- peering through the ice, you can't see any visible traps. Well, you go outside and you see the outside of the oh, I'm not dead. Surprise. And you are not dead. <laughs> so what are you going to do, dear? Now, allegedly, I spoke to somebody on the forum. And if you have something on the sled, you can drag it in the party sheet. And then I assign it to the sled and it shouldn't sell it. So that you can put party items and take them in and out of the inventory. Okay. Shall we try that with something insignificant Yes, first? like a mining pick or whatever. Aye. Clear S- seems legit. Right, so Dave is examining the chest. Lantesh sets up our uh, thing. Kenan's like, uh, okay, I'm not sure about this. She's uh, casting spells. No, it's all right. She's just trying to find out if there's any magic around here. You might want to, and don't panic about what I'm going to do next. You might want to watch out the way when you check that chest, Ben. Right, Lantesh. I'm limbering up. The axe does indeed detect as magical. Oh. Like I said, I... to the giant <clears throat> figure that is frozen in the ice, it will be nothing more than a small hatchet, and he's obviously used for, used for, for chopping off chunks of wheel. Have a look at, around the rest of the room, and then um, if there's nothing else in here that's magical, can I go and have a look at the statue underneath that table to see if that's magical? I think Ben yanked it since he's popped. Oh, is it? Did, did you? Can pick, I have uh, a look? Yeah, I can I have a look? Detect. All is right. Anything in the chest? Nothing de- in the chest detects as magical. What about the statue? The statue does not detect magic. Right, Ben, when you're done, you might want to, everyone might want to take a bit of a step back from us. Okay. And it's just like a campfire. Yes. I'm going to do something like that. Rich, I will now be, be, begin to machine gun flame bolts. Okay, you, be, you begin to machine gun flame bolts in the chest. Uh, uh, just lighting a campfire, Dave, would not work. Did you see that video I posted uh, in the channel? Oh. Like, things are so cold. Like, he throws a kettle of boiling water in the air and it instantly freezes. He throws it straight up. And it lands on him as snow. So, like, just lighting a little campfire next to something is not going to melt the ice. So you begin to machine gun, Earl, and it looks like it's going to take you at least an hour, judging by the... Okay, I'm going to take a step forward, and I'm going to go to flamethrower mode. Two burning hands. Right, so you manage to melt a little bit of the corner of the chest out, revealing that it's cold stone. Right, and then I'll keep blasting again. Right, so you blast, blast, blast away. 
and uh, eventually after quite some time you manage to free enough of the chest uh, luckily Andy has still got over an hour worth of attempted skinning and that's before you start on the wolf yeah so eventually you manage to get the chest freed enough that you can open it it's been around an hour what with Tracy's ritual and Andy's skinning and what have you nothing else has leapt out and attacked you that's a change so I'll, while I'm doing this I'll keep talking to the wolf and I'll be like you really should hang around with us you would fit right in and we can provide never ending fish and their knucklehead um, trout things you can Fresh. also just freeze bowls of soup uh, mm-hmm. and carry them about which is something else nobody in that town has a freezer they just hang them out of the window in a carrier bag yeah right so uh, Earl sticks his head in the chest and it breaks the, the lid falls on and crushes his head no that wouldn't surprise us in the slightest I don't know if this is a misprint so what do you do now that you've got the uh, the lid free um, can we open the lid somehow is there hinges? Uh, there are. It just seems to be uh, like crudely carved out of slabs of rock. Oh, so it's just like, you know... Um, a stone box, lid. yeah, with a slidey off top. Can we get the strong boys to lift it up? Tell you what I can do. I can transform the lid into wood. Would that be better? It would. <laughs> it would. Yeah, so you uh, concentrate and the lid transforms to wood and then Earl, you push it over. Inside, dun, dun, dun. I look in with my eyes closed. <laughs> you see nothing. <laughs> what? You've got your eyes closed, you can't oh, see right. anything. Does anything make a hissing, attacking noise? No, there's nothing I'll, hissing I'll or not I'll kind of open my eyes slightly, you know, like I'll squint. Right, inside it contains tools, giant-sized tools used for flensing. I think it's something to do with chopping wheels up, as well as a scrimshaw goat, small enough to fit in your hand. Right, we'll have all that. What about the axe that is embedded in the wheel side? I'll take it. it. It's we'll sh- warm it out. Right, so <clears throat> grab it, and uh, as if by magic, the parcel is dragged into the party sheet. It's a flensing chamber. I'm not entirely sure what flensing is. I think it's got something to do with chopping up wheels. Yeah, it, yeah it's removing the oil. Um, so there you go. The, there's a battle axe and a scrimshaw goat. The battle axe is magical. We don't know about. The, can you do another tech magic when we're doing the on check the goat while we're doing? The, last ten minutes, doesn't it? So I but we've been blasting the chest out for an hour. Right, go on. It, it didn't detect as magical from within the chest. Yeah. Oh yeah. But how does the chest block detect magic? I don't know. You don't know. But so Tracy, if you want to do it again, you can detect it on the goat, which yeah, does not. I can can do because uh, we're still waiting on. for Andy. Right, I'm going to go and help Andy with warm hands. Okay. Yeah. Does the scrimshaw goat look a valuable piece? Well, all scrimshaw looks a little bit valuable. Oh, I'm going to put that in my put it in my uh, thing then, rather than just leave it there because it could be valuable. And we could always use little things like this to decorate um, the, the it, it, tavern up. I the pub. How are we going to move all of this oil? Your sled is full. Good. Your sled is absolutely full. With what with the goblins and the incredibly scared like four hit point commoner that you're dragging about now you've got two kids who are, who are gonna have to sit on somebody's knee um i can put, we can put uh bobble be on on his uh disc as usual um and we can put some like like non-living parcels of whatever we've got on the on the disc with him because i dare he doesn't weigh 500 pounds well does he? Uh, while andy's doing this in uh asia drag one at a time the barrels up to the entrance and we'll cover them in a snowbank yes easily he can drag some ridiculous <coughs> amount of weight he's part mule that boy <laughs> right, well, we'll do that. We'll stash them in a snowbank because we'll have to come back for them later. If we're passing this way, we'll just fill the boot. And when you when you came back, um, I've, I've, I presume I've, I've managed to get the gut pile out and there's the slivers of fresh liver roasting on, on skewers. Oh. Uh, in, in, enough for everybody, including our little wolfy friend. And uh, all, all your hair is toss cobble going, I'm in here. <laughs> I'm actually in the mammoth. Oh, dear God. Working from the inside out. So I'll let, clean you up once you have See don't, how don't you do. So yeah, like he's, when Corin emerges, he's actually got his full-on like covered head to foot in. Just pressed uh, mammoth, so he's mammoth nice and guts. clean. Uh, I'm, am I getting any help with this? Yeah, I'll give you a pair of warm hands. You could a warm. Give us a handle on Tesh. Right. Yep. Well, click advantage, Andy, on the bottom, the bar at the bottom. Go yeah, on, Andy, well do it. Oh, it's good. It's an, oh, it's good. It's an Woo-hoo. eighteen. So, uh, yeah, so you get the uh, the large, you get the large hide off, and uh, quite a lot of the mammoth meat. Sadly, uh, it is quite an emaciated mammoth. Mammoth is starving itself to death, but you do get quite a large 
pile of mammoth meat, which again yeah, you got you, you're going to have trouble transporting it all. Well, uh, and, and and a couple of uh, ivory mammoth tusks by any chance? Oh god, yeah. Awesome. We could we could flense the skull. You could flense it. Flensing is the removal of skin. So one hide um, size down, Andy. So you get a, a large hide, a, a usable right. large hide. Guys, just a thought. Whales have known uh, for swallowing all kinds of things. Is there any chance there might be something in its stomach? Well, there's a big hole in the side. You can go all have a look. What are you looking oh, for? Oh, is it is it being is it being sorted out, or is it just the whole there's whale? A whole that's look, there's a whole whale, but if you look on the map, there's a hole in its side. So go and stick your head in, have a look. <laughs> No, I'm not bothered. No, you're right. Yeah. I've got this idea that I don't want to do, says Tracy. Yeah, but you're daft enough to do what I suggest. I, I, I keep dying with being daft enough to do it. Um, I'm going to heal me with Bracey. That seems odd. Uh, um, yeah, so, like I said, it's going to take Andy two hours to do this. You, people can actually take a short rest if they're not helping. Yeah, uh, well, I'm helping, so, so I can help. I'm helping as well. And Ben, do you want to take a short rest or are you... Were you uh, mucking in, as it were? I'll take a short rest. So you end up with a huge pile of mammoth chops. <laughs> and uh, mammoth chops. <laughs> how, how many pounds of mammoth chops do we get? A lot. Uh, like a whole lot of mammoth chops. Like like 200 pounds of mammoth chops. Uh, right. Lovely. And uh, like it's eight pounds of meat a day for the sled dogs. So if nothing else... Yep. Uh, the problem is going to be you can't carry it all. <clears throat> like I said, your sled's full. But we should be able to... Uh, I'll make sure I feed the wolf as well. I'll ask the wolf, is there any chance I can ride on your back? Because we'll seem to be a little bit overladen. And I'll give you a lovely brush down when we get back. Yeah, so if it's on the sled, Andy, if you untick the uh, the carried, but you can't get £200. So what, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to try it and put it in the party inventory and mark it at the ice lodge. Because you can put it outside in a snowbank or whatever. Um, right. And we'll see if. Oh, hang on! I'd better, I'd better try and. Um, w- would would our wolfy friend be particularly upset uh, if I were to skin his friend? Um, as long I as wouldn't you, know him to say it. As long as you're not skinning me. Well, I was uh, going to say, you know, I, I, I just thought it was polite to ask because I got the impression that you and he didn't get on too well. Uh, no, well, he was in charge, but I mean, we had quite, a, we had quite a scam going. We had. Plenty of food. Most people around here don't have a lot of food, so it was all right. Well, look, put it this way. If if you'd rather I didn't, I won't. Uh, I'm not sure I feel about eating him, but... Uh, oh, you don't, fi- you don't have to eat him. Filled your boots, basically. Right. Uh, mind if I have another roll then? Not at all. Well, hang on. I'm just going to try this. Arr. I'm just going to put the... the uh... We could probably hire a cargo sled and, and dog, a driver, maybe a couple, to transport um, all the stuff back to um, Branch Hand. Aye, what's Garrett doing these days? Well, you'll have to go up and ask him. It, you I'm know some telepathically news. contacting him. That seems overpowered, David. It's a good job. That's got no downsides. Um, yeah, it is wrong. Uh, it says specified range. Hold on a second. Um, it'll see it on the actual item description. Your side crystal. Yeah. Range of telepathy is 60 feet, Dave. Oh, well. So you can't contact the goblin to say, can you please come and pick us up? Can it, how far can the bat travel away? Um, I know you can only telepathically communicate with 100 feet, but I think it can travel further than that. Oh, I'll send a mess with it, you know, a little message to um, the goblin. So you're going to tie a message to his foot and let him fly across your delicious-looking bat. You're going to let him fly by himself across the tundra. Well, I mean, when I'm finished here, I don't mind going. And I can have me short rest on the sled coming back. Right, so I tell you what, Dave, roll me a D20, and on an 11 or higher, he makes it okay. On a 10 or lower, just the, this is a straight look roll, something finds him delicious and eats him on the way there. Uh-oh! So, so Dave loses another bat. Why bat? Do you want me to go? So, Dave, you uh, you don't know what happens because it's outside the 100-foot range, but you feel your telepathic link go dead. Ben looks uh, slightly perturbed for just a second, peeps. <laughs> <coughs> I think we might all have to go. It wouldn't be um, safe um, um, Andy going by himself. Right, so once you spend a, a, a rest with that battle axe, David identifies, and it's there you go. Right. I, I don't think I'm going to bother skinning that wolf. Okay. Because, like, his mate's, like, looking at me. Well, she'll make sure everybody's well fed. Yeah, so eat as much as you can, chaps, because, you know, you never know when you're going to be back for it. But I guess, I mean, it's cold inside. There's no kind of atmosphere. Yeah, so there's the big throne and the dead wheel. Can I check that symbol out on the throne, by the way? You need a giant's first giant's heart and... 
You can't? Yeah, but oh, give me here. I, I presume Howell meant a live one. I'll, I'll start stacking the mate next to the barrels under the snowbank. How can you get a live frost giant heart? I mean, it's frozen. It's as fresh as the minute it dies. Well, go, go for your life. I just have a nasty feeling what might happen when you defrost it. So you go over and examine, examine the chest, but it means nothing. Examine the I think the, he was uh, a fan of Batman. But it means nothing to you. Oh, uh... Tracy, it's a 30-foot range and you're to detect magic, isn't it? So the yes. uh, the throne radiates an aura of conjuration magic because it actually tells you now, so I don't just name Italian foodstuffs. All right. What was the aura on the bottle? I just out of curiosity. Uh, pesto. Huh. Uh, it's just a, a magical hit the axe. All right. Um, guys, that throne looks like it's um, radiating conjuration magic, which is a bit concerning. Uh, actually, uh, Bracey can speak giant, and he says that giant rune is the rune for ice. I don't think we should mess about with it. Uh, m- maybe it'll conjure ice storms or something horrible. Yeah, um, worse, conjure ice golems or something like that. Could conjure whales. Creatures. I don't know where he got that bastard from. Or demons. I know a bit about demons. I can speak demon. Well. I use my dwarven knowledge of stone mace exam. Um, you normally sit in them, although it would be a bit big for you. Your legs would hang over the ed- edge. I wouldn't suggest sitting in it, guys. Did it look like um, a dwarf manufacturer? No, no, definitely not. Uh, if anything, it's uh, far too crude to be a dwarf manufacturer. Earl should well, sit we... in it. He hasn't died today. <laughs> Oh, like, are we going to have to yump back to the sledge then? Can I have an arcana yeah. roll about the, the throne? Because uh, I've skilled with it. Uh, you can, yes, but the arcana Carna roll just ascertains that it's the giant rune for ice, and Bracy actually knows. All that. right, okay. Uh, so you, you can confirm that he's telling you the truth, I guess. But uh, yeah. Oh no, no, no! I want. Uh, um, that's what it but, is. But um, I just to try and discern a little bit more about you know the nature of the conjuration magic. You know, just weird, worrying. Anyways, right? How how much more um, by way of hides do we need so that everybody can have the old furry underpants? Straight. Um, it's a medium hide for the medium people and a small hide for the small people. So, right, and you can cut a large up into two through two mediums, I believe. Right, so it's what I was gonna say is if we're now gonna walk back to the sledge, yeah, sure. Uh, any chance you could carry one of these tusks and 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 the hide for us, mate? Yeah. I- yeah. So you're using Aisha as a pack mule. Yeah, yeah. just well, dump, um, dump them into the party inventory and then Aisha can take them back out again. <coughs> right, hang on. I shall do that. I just need to open up the party sheet. Yeah, so Dave, you see it. Ben, my friend, what's the status on getting the message delivered? And Ben looks just a little sad. Don't know what's happened out there, but nothing good. Right, I'm on it. So when you summon him next, Dave, are you going to be called? You will be known as number three. But wait, ah. why number three? I'm not a number, I have a free back. Yeah, so there's. Uh, I've got uh, actual yeah. items. Hang on, hey, hang on. Uh, oh, so you've got a lot you've got a large oh. pelt which is a mammoth pelt because they weigh um three pounds right two tusks whatever they weigh uh i don't know but i'm sure somebody can google them and have a look we'll use them as, we'll use them as uh skis that's the one thing that is not mentioned in iceland Dan skiing as if nobody's invented skiing it's not mentioned anywhere all right so two mammoth tusks and a large pelt which asia can hoover up Right, we'll do also, that. Just because I figure that, like, the pelt we're going to need and the ivory is going to be the most valuable thing we've found out there. Yeah, if only and you knew oil. a scrim shander to actually work on those tusks. Well, it's funny you should mention that. Isn't it? Well, the whale oil, you can't actually move, Tracy, because it's five barrels and the barrels are £50 pounds each. Yeah, uh, but ugly. We'll come Sorry, back so first. the barrels are £500 pounds each. It, it it occurs to me, what about having a word with Garrett and asking him to uh, scrim shander these tusks and to come up and collect the whale oil and he can have one barrel as his fee? That's a pretty good deal, I would think. That is a pretty good deal. Well, I mean, and and then he and then that means like if we've been overly generous, he's probably gonna owe us several. Nice. Right. I wouldn't say owe you several, but he'd be willing to do stuff for a, a drop of a hat because he knows he's gonna get paid well. Aye, that's what I mean. Yeah. Well, he, he owes you anyway for saving his life. So 
is pretty much indebted to you. Well, so well yeah, I, after the um, next time I know, but, but like r- rather than kind of relying on that, I thought it would be because like he's he's a decent bloke. It would be nice to keep paying him where we're going to afford to. I couldn't agree more. All, all all was stacking up the brownie points for the day when we're absolutely potless and need a hand. True. Why no? You're so loaded now, loaded. Right, so heading back to town, yes? Yeah. So your little procession, uh, your little Benny Hill-esque procession, crosses the, uh, crosses <coughs> the tundra. Three miles will take you a couple of hours. Uh, three hours it'll take you to, to hike back to town. Uh, the kids uh, do go stoically, but they're tired and worn out by the time you arrive back in town. They're bloody well fed, going great for little son. Yeah, they're full of mammoth. And your ragged little band arrives back at Dugan's Hall. Well named that place. It is an absolute hall. A radioactive, radioactive hall, I think you'll find. A radioactive hall. So that are you, what do you do when you get back to yeah. Dugan's Hall with these kids? Avoid, avoid the radiation pit and then um, sit near the edge of town and send the kids home. Oh, so you don't even go in, you just send them home. You, yeah, you go. What you see, Pierre, us, anyway? Well, uh, uh, Earl seems unwilling to go into Dugan's Hall. You go and sit in the 20 Stones of Throne. Well, I, I don't mind going with the kids just to sort of say them safely to the front door. But, but I'm, um, not, oh. I'm not going in the house. Do they have any shops here for, like, selling arm at? Oh, OK, so you are you going back to her house then? Uh, no, Dugan's Hall is a shithole, Dave. It's a small town with no inn. Uh, there's a bunch of strange people that live here uh, who apparently worship this throne dude. So you head back to the town, uh, the door opens... And Hilda greets the children in a flood of tears, Andy. A flood of okay. tears. Uh, we go, Hilda. There's your children back, as promised. Uh, she says, uh, thank you, and uh, uh, like asynchronously blinks her eyes at you uh, and gives you a big toothy smile and, and says, I haven't got any coin, my lord. Um, all I've got is uh, uh, these boots are for my husband. What, he died. I, uh, he won him in a drinking contest off an adventurer, and uh, I ain't planning on using them, and I'd like to gift them to you as a as a reward, like. Thank you. Thank you kindly, Hilda. That's very, that's very thoughtful of you. Uh, I, I uh, t- these are um, knee length boots made of fine leather and lined with the softest of furs that you've ever felt they look, they look like the party has id them already uh, they look like they are very comfortable and warm Andy and uh, <coughs> as per the DMG when you handle a magical item you get the suspicion that there's something wrong with it well not wrong with it but you, you can get the feeling that there's something special about it yes and she hands you these boots right well oh. I shall Oh, 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 they, they have an image as well, look. I, I shall hold out me, me empty... Oh, what's there? Booties. They're if, rather if nice. They're, if they're booties of Al Avalanche... So, but but, but if, if if Lantesh or uh, Corrin wear them, the knee length, does that make them thigh-length boots? Thigh-length boots. Thigh-length boots, baby. Right up it's to me, niggas. What are you, are you running? What I was going to say, what, in That's, your backpack? I <laughs> I, I shall I shall thank Hilda very much as I hold out my empty sack for her to drop the boots in. <laughs> Not touching them. Uh, she goes <laughs> to give you a hug. You're like, no, you're all right, love. <laughs> Thanks, bye. And uh, she uh, says, uh, so them horrible wolves so will not be seeing no more of them then? No, you shouldn't do. Uh, the kids are going, they've got one. They've got one. They tamed it. They've captured it. And yeah, yeah, but, we're, she looks but we're, we're taking it away so it shouldn't cause you any more bother. Well... Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know. If only my husband were here, he'd be so grateful. Oh, we're, we're very happy. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> so, Guys, we do have an issue. So you, take, take what, care, Hilda. Yeah. What is your issue? You're, you're injured and it's dark. Well, I was thinking we might do something straight, right? He was out. But why don't we take a detour and head up to Targos, right? Yes. Because isn't Targos where... No, it's not Targos. It's Brennan. Bremen where... Um... Where Garrett lives. Yeah. Garrett lives in Targos. All right. Well, we'll go to Targos, see Garrett, drop our friend off in Targos and have Garrett drop him off in Lonelywood. Good plan. Yes, like that, like that. Very good. What do you mean, drop the wolf off in Lonelywood? No, not the wolf. Well, the wolf can go to Lonelywood as well. We'll sort that all out. But I'm talking about um, our friend that we rescued outside of Bryn Shander, who's supposed to not be around. Yeah, the one who, oh, oh, yes, who yeah, are giving yeah, in yeah, you. Yeah. M- Mr. Four Hit Point Herbert. The brother yeah. of the guy that got killed. Hardwick. I'll, yeah, I'll turn round to um, our goblin, our not quite a goblin friend, and go, might have to take a couple of days to detour just to quickly finish a few bits of business off but we'll just keep your friends sourced so it'll all be all right um the longer i'm away from cockalook you realize that they're 
that bitch might try and take over. Oh, no, that's the point. Okay, let's they'll go think straight... I, They'll think I'm dead. Yeah, let's go straight to Carpalock and drop use lot off, and then we'll just have to deal. And then we'll, and then we'll, make, a, we'll make a byline. And Hardwick says, you're taking us where? What What the hell? You know, we're just going to quick lean up to Carpalock. It'll only take a few days. We're going to drop our friends here off, and then we're going <coughs> to nibble to Targos, get a friend of ours to do a quick couple of jobs for us, and then we're off to listen to a mysterious signal. And I, I assume you don't want to be coming adventurer? No. Um, then then the, you can't. The, the icy embrace of the Frostman's looking quite good at this point and he's like shoved in the corner uh, looking at these rowdy goblins who you keep them drunk and full of food. And uh, <coughs> so he's wedged between some goblins uh, uncomfortably between Asia because like basically this sled is now bulging to overflowing and... <laughs> Does it look like Santa's sled? Yeah. No, uh, Lantesh is like sort of lashed onto the back so she can cast the tensor's floating disc off the back. Um... And it's just madness, and everybody's still quite badly hurt, and uh, you haven't slept, so are you pushing on now? Well, we should really have a rest, but I don't want to do it at Duggan's so. Hall. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, to be fair... I like I, the amount of tools I have. Yeah, I, I, and I don't want any extras. I, I'd, I'd rather... Why don't we do what we did the last time, and you, you'd say where it, the map says 10 trail, and there's that little bunch of trees? Yeah, we'll set up there. We are camped there once before. You yeah, did. We'll have a, we'll so have you'll a, have already dug a latrine. Yeah. So we'll that's have a night, good. A quiet night with a, 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 a we'll, we'll play so you can like get the goblin the drunkest. Right. So this is so where where are you actually camping? Are you are you going to just go for it overnight or? Yeah, we'll, we'll camp overnight in the cop, and then when we've done that, we're going to head to Karkanov, and then when we've done Karkanov, we're going to. No, well, you've head. you've trekked three miles to Ice Lodge and then three miles back, so the day is done basically. Yeah. You will get a, a you will get a level of exhaustion if you are heading to the trail and then camping there. Well, not at the trail. We'll camp outside the degrees hall in the um, in the tent. In the tent, yeah. yeah. We'll just all pile in the one. Uh, just would 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 ra- would rather camp outside a town in the tent than wake up with seven tours or nine tours. I mean, it makes or fourteen tours. Makes total sense to me. Total. total just wait total like at uh, Lehman's tiny hut next level. Yeah. And, um, Yes, so the DC, the first DC is 20, so it's 10, uh, 15, and you've got insulation, so it's 20, so you're okay for frost checks for the night. Uh, the only, right, I can remove these kids, these strange deleted kids. Uh, the only people who don't have frost clothing is uh, our friend, Hardwick. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's got cold weather gear, but he's, he's only got standard cold weather gear, so he still needs to roll. But he's okay. He can st- he can still feel it. So you camp outside, and uh, everything seems to go okay. Oh, long rest. Oh, no rest indeed. So before that goes any further, chat. Right. You spent sadly. You spend a pleasant evening without disturbed. Grr. Long rest for everybody. Talk, talk some shop about uh, engineering with my little friend that's got to go back to the goblin place. Uh, so Tell yes, us. so you talk, you you talk shop with Hardwick who keeps throwing uh, looks over to the. No, goblin. not Hardwick. Spellix, who are taking back. Oh, oh yeah, Spellix. Uh, yeah, not. Uh, yeah, the goblins are, are drunk in the corner singing. Um, the little goblin song from Black Adder. See the little goblin, see the little toes. But they, it sounds much nicer in Goblin as Earl keeps them plied with drink. Uh, uh, can we also? Um, can you identify them boots while you're on Tracy before you do long rest? Aye. Yeah. Go on, and then I'll uh, get get me peepees in. They're and in then, Andy's um, backpack, aren't they? There when I find them. Yep, that are. Where the bloody hell have they gone? Wait a minute. You probably have two, you've got two backpacks, Andy. Oh, you have not. While I'm doing that, I'll bound that um, backpack to us. Yeah, I, I don't know why there's two backpacks on my character sheet. No, I'll, I'll sort that out for you. Right, you've got boots somewhere. Yeah. Oh, Wait a minute. Boots, that's them, isn't it? Boots, that's them. Oh, these are awesome, Andy. These are fucking awesome. Hello. And they require Hello. attunement. Right, 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 right. So that means I could go out in the all together just with me boots on. At the moment, yes. Champion. Are they boots of the north? Kind of. Because I can vaguely remember those in the day, but I don't know if they changed. There may be the newer version of them. They're called Boots yeah. of the Winterlands. So you put those on, Andy, you feel nice and warm. Right. Uh, what's the little circle on my character sheet next to them for? That is attunement, because they're an item that requires attunement. You well, know, you I, know, shall, I shall be sleeping with me boots on. Literally. So, yeah, so you tick that. You can only attune to three items. If you go to the very top of that column, it says mm-hmm. A, 
and then one out of three. Ah, right, yes, I'm with you. If you remember, because you had, like, loots and things, and you could only attune a certain number of items. So that was a quite fucking awesome. Well, they, they might actually be useful, And uh, I was thinking. So I have to add an effect for those bastards now, don't I? Yes, I do. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so Andy gets up. Are you actually going to go out in the snow in your underpants, or are you just not going to say anything? I'm not going to mention it, but yes, I am just going to go and have a turn around the tent in just my underpants and my furry boots, just to check the work. Uh, yeah, Andy walks around in the uh, in his underkicks. But because I've identified, I know what they do, so I know what he's doing. Uh, mad bastard. Yep. And as I as I open the tent flap, I go, don't worry, I may be gone sometime. And yep, I'll go. That's the one. I'll have a jog round the tent and then uh, pop back in. Well, they seem to be functional. Bear, bear in mind, Andy, off. these are thigh-length boot, leather boots. Yeah, and I don't half look fetching in them. He certainly does. Uh, I need to copy that word in exactly, so I'll control copy that. And then it's semicolon, resist, colon, call. Mm. Think. We'll fucking find out, won't we? So if you equip your boots, and well, unequip them, and then re-equip them. Oh. There you go, Andy, it works. Awesome. Awesome. So if there's any if there's any chilly jobs now doing, I'm your hobbit. Although you suspect that he just is enjoying running around in the snow in his underpants. I'm surprised he kept the underpants right. Um <coughs> Right, we'll advance the calendar. Can we use eight rations? Sorry, four rations to feed the sled dogs. Uh, uh, yeah. who's, who's carrying the dog, mate? Um the carrot the the um Oh sled. all right. Do, do I need to tip off a ration? We do. Uh, wait a minute, I've got a thing for this, haven't we? Yeah, oh, if you've got a, a do it Aye, on, on, on your actions, ho jar. That's it. <laughs> Right, and are you saying we are buggering off for the deer? Are you, and where are you heading? Um, we're heading to cock a bullock. Right, Andy, can uh, you give me an animal, an animal hand and roll? See how well you do. I can indeed. Two seconds. Twenty mile handling. Right, so you do three. Oh, get in. Wow. Okay. So you do an extra. Um, you do an extra mile today because of your superb handling. So. I'm getting the hang of this. You are getting the hang of this. Uh, so it's three. Dog sled is three miles in an hour. So that's two. Three gets you there. Then they have to rest for three. And then you can go for another two hours. So you can go uh, one, two. And then that gets you to tea time. And you need to break camp or do you wish to push on? No, nope, we'll camp up. We'll camp we'll up. Sensible. Yep. Oh, look at you all being sensible and shit. Oh, sorry, Andy, you got an extra mile due to your excellent skill, didn't you? So actually moved a little bit further. Just takes us to the bend in the river. Nigh, nigh enough. Yep. So you uh, camp at the bend of the frozen river and yep. uh, consume. Is, is, did somebody knock off the eight? Sorry, the four rations worth? Oh, it's eight pounds or four rations for the dogs. I think we're going to be feeding them buffalo meat. You have meat on your carrot sheet on the sled. Somebody does. Yep. I, Other, I, I don't. Otherwise, you have to feed them rations because you, you didn't bring any of the mammoth meat because there was a big pile of chops that are waiting at the ice lodge and carry them. We'll get them on the way home. Yeah. So who's, who's got the meat? No, you give all of the meat to. To the goblins. Yeah, we just have rations now. You just have rations. So, so you need to have used eight total rations for the two deers on the dogs. But who's going to knock the eight rations off? I can knock off eight rations. I've got six rations left on us, so I need. To... I've got twelve, so I'll knock off eight. So you don't need to concern them. You can just type them in. Right. I'll just remove <coughs> twelve. Make it four. There you go. Okay. So this to deer. The weather probably going to be all right because you've been lucky as fuck. Tropical storm. Uh, clear skies. Fucking hell, it's not snowing uh, and it's not windy. It's actually as pleasant a day as you're going to get. So, do you want to give me your animal handling roll, Andy? And uh, you should make a cock a look. You move yes, three hours, get you there. A 12 is uh, one less as you've hit some difficult terrain. And then you rest for three hours and then two hours. So, yes, by nightfall, you actually make it to cock a look. We'll stay overnight at cock a look. Yep. We'll drop <clears throat> off the giant frozen pile of soup. Yeah. And all the food we've brought them. And we'll let the boss man tell them about the new peace process and the shipments of food. Food. Yes, so uh, Yabnok returns. Uh, the gate opens. The goblin shouts, Yabnok! As Yabnok returns and he uh, gives his goblin speech. The, the witch doctor lady does not look happy to see him. 
not at all um and she uh, she was, looks like she was hoping he wasn't going to come back alive however i don't like leaving him here where he had left i think we need to take care of her snub suck in charge snub suck uh tells job not that uh, things are starting to look a bit dicey because you've been so long you didn't think that you were coming back so uh, but now that Yarbnot has returned he walks in triumph through the, the gates the goblins screaming Yarbnot um, and he, he indicates the large amount of knuckle-headed trout you had brought with you and about 500 pounds of frozen soup and about 500 pounds of frozen soup yes uh, and he's hailed as the demigod of the goblins and it looks like it looks like they're well on their way to being integrated into the peoples of ten towns you set up a, the crawler to, to head north and head up to Myrtle to meet the uh, Dualdi every every two weeks month whatever and then it's your crazy ass plan yeah and uh, we'll we'll go up to from the this is where we're gonna have to do some bookkeeping that's all right so I'll, I'll just quickly throw this out there and then anyone can tell me you're sure if I'm wrong right but I figure we'll go to the ice lodge load up what we can from the ice lodge head up to Bremen uh, head up to Targos, hire uh, a sledge to pick the rest of the stuff from the ice lodge up and stash it up in long, uh, stash it up in Lonely Wood. We take our friend up to Lonely Wood along with a wolf if he's hanging out with us, and we'll send a note to um, the head woman to explain the situation that this guy is going to live in the, the tavern and fix it up, and we'll give him some money to uh, buy supplies and that, and ask her if she could do us a, a favour and just you know look out for him, and then we'll send a note to that girl we met. And Bremen, who's probably in Lonely Wood now because she's gone up there to talk to the sea monster. At which point, we'll arrange for the sea monster to hang out at Lonely Wood and feed the wolf. Yeah, what I, I add to that, if they took the ice baller to um, the lodge, they um, take me back. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good point. Then we'll leave. If does Yab Yab Malaki and there's a big frozen cat there that they can butcher as well. So, how about he takes the most of the meat? We'll need to buy some rations in Targos. Um, we'll do all this because it's mainly book work stuff if they take the crawler up to get the rest of the food and the frozen call but leave the would wouldn't it be an idea uh, maybe not to mention the ice lodge to the goblins because knowing what goblins are like much as i now trust them more than i used to are they not likely to walk off with with the barrels of whale oil yeah i probably wouldn't let them but i do agree with you yeah we'll 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 have it delivered to, we'll drop it off to them at some point we'll arrange for it to be dropped off the and also, if they're taking the crawler and they've only got one route to worry about, do you know what I mean? They're like, they'll learn the route and they'll, they'll learn if we go up the middle down, we'll get loads of food and then we'll go home. Yeah, got you. Right, that's the plan anyway. But first, I think Tracy wants to inspect the golem. Not the problem. Um, could I add, um, if we've got a way get one hour oil and sell it in Bryn Shand at an FN percent? Yeah, could do. Good thinking. But what's the what's the way? It's £500 that you're... Um... Spell can carry, isn't it, Tracy? Mm-hmm. So the, uh, the 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 sled dogs have been around far long enough now that if you make an animal handling roll, they'll let them ride in the very back of the sled, which means that you carry one barrel on the back, but you do not have five hundred pounds of weight in the sled. Yeah, we'll just take one barrel with us this time. We'll just keep coming yesterday. Yeah, I'll help. And I'll assist Andy. I'm not making animal handling roll because I'm not skilled. I'll do it. At least I don't think I am. So do you want to make an animal handle roll with advantage, Andy? Yes, uh, please. I would quite like to. Go, go, Andy. Oh, God. No, no, it's go a 19. On. you got advantage. Uh, yeah. So nice. at this point, the uh, animals have been about Bob quite a bit, and obviously you, you've kept them reasonably clean. They do still smell the stink of death, but you, uh, you get him to, to hold food, and uh, eventually the sled dogs will warm to him enough where they'll come and eat near him initially maybe in the future they'll even be able to, to feed him but they seem to be tolerate him particularly as you stand next to them and, and encourage them to come forward and as long as he's not sitting in the front seat it looks like you maybe you'll be able to load him into the back of the sled now Champion. well there's that right we spend a pleasant evening in i think tracy wants to play with the construct i just want to have a little look at it whilst we're here climb yep. up or whatever i've got to do uh, they can lower it down if you want to have a look. It, Ooh, it's yes, like please. a marionette with no strings, so it, it lowers down and just flops onto the floor. Oh, how heavy is it? Uh, very heavy. You can't move it. Uh, you touching it? Yeah, you running your hands over it. Yeah, I want to feel what what it's made. What kind? Is it metal? Is it stone? Is it? <sighs> I wonder if we get working all two cargo sleds. At the oh, it's a mech. It is. It's beautiful. 
It's absolutely gorgeous. It's nine feet tall, um, and it looks like it's made of metal, but as you run your hands over it, it almost feels as if it's uh, either wooden or maybe made of shell. It's not not just metal, and uh, it's an unusual material. You're not entirely sure. And it has... Uh, now you look, you're looking at it closer. <coughs> in, in several points on it, it has written in a language that you do not un- understand. Um, almost like you know, like uh, you have a serial label on the bottom of a toaster, and it's got the model number and stuff like that. It looks like it's got those in several points, and it's got uh, like what may be an access hatch, but you can't prise it open in any way um, mm. with little writing next to it. Where Can exactly I find it? They found it far, far to the northeast. Uh, Near where that tower is that we're going to go and investigate. Can I copy if down I remember the right writing, it? even though I don't know what it means? Absolutely, yeah. Right, and I'll see if I can get somebody to decipher it for us. Might be a clue as to where that token thing is. That's supposed to um, activate it. Like, it, it's so heavy that Asia tries to move it, and he can't move its limbs. Wow. That is heavy. Like, you see him, his face turns bright red, his muscles bulge, and he's, like, he's shaking, but he can't. He can't move this thing by himself. And it takes, like, 12 goblins to, like, haul it up on a pulley system. I'll ask um, Yabnak if it's okay um, when I get more information about this thing. I can come back, and if so, um, is it possible to retrieve this? Would you be? Would if, you think they'd be willing to part with it? If, if you can repair it, yes, certainly. It's completely dead, and it gives it a quick kick, which is, <laughs> hurts his toe and goes, ow. Right, okay. Um, uh, it looks like on the chest, um, I don't know how to describe them in a fantasy way, it looks like there might be a, a set of re- recessed LEDs, if you know what I mean, um, mm. but the they're not like LEDs. It's like a clear glass-like substance, but it's not glass. You tap on it with your finger nail and it feels hard. It's not diamond, but it's see-through. Um, the whole thing seems to be made of mystery wrapped in an enigma, smothered in secret sauce. Yeah, no shit. I just well, have I'll, this I'll... feeling that it's going to go, ah, yo, come on. That'll be cool. But yeah, the goblins have painted all over it in yellow paint, as you can see. It'll get repainted in the colours of uh, Lathanda once uh, it's fully operational. This fully operational battle station. We have a fully operational arcane guardian. What's the worst that can have? Oh, that's all right then. There are seven types of arcane guardian. Do, 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 Right, you spend an, a, a night and you can eat with the goblins so you won't have to use rations or feed the dogs. Yeah, also... Um, the uh, worth- the uh, Hardwick is terrified being in a goblin town and uh, will not leave Aisha's side as he is the scariest thing in the room. Sorry, mate, we're taking the from where I live right now. Just, they're fine, they're great. Nice little guys. I'll, I'll give one of the bodyguards another beer. You know, the ones that we had drunk, I assume I've yeah. made fast friends with them. And they keep going, yeah, 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 and pointing at you and then making the drinky, drinky motion with their fingers. Yeah. Are, there other, are some of the other goblins coming round when they see them having a good time with the beer? Oh, yeah, they're, they're, it spreads like wildfire how they, they've been treated nice, they've been fed well, and uh, they haven't been murdered in their sleep uh, or anything like that. And they're like, what? You haven't even been murdered in your sleep? No, no, honestly. They fed did us and everything. You, did that witch doctor speak common? Uh, she does seem to speak common, yes. Um, I'll ask Yubnik if it would be worth me threatening her or should I just leave best alone? No, I think not. Yeah, she pours poison in the ears of the other goblins but right now there's nothing really she can see at us uh, thanks to you they have food and a future I, I will using my massive charisma and persuasion spell, I will spend the entire meal essentially bigging your nickel to everybody who will hear how we masterfully uh, negotiated a, a r- brilliant deal with the, the people of Bryn Shander who, who value the inclusion of uh, the goblins into the ten towns oh, does, does that sound like a performance or a persuasion in role, do you think? I would be very yeah. persuasive individually if I have to be. Or I could try to perform. I mean, you know. Oh, but, you know. what? Nah, 20, baby. I take it everyone's convinced. Everyone does seem incredibly convinced. Oh, my little um, D20 roll thing didn't work. I'm going to have to check it. That, that sucks. Right, in the morning, let's head off. We've got to get head to the ice lodge, pick up a barrel of oil, and then we'll head up to Thargos. Right, so you depart early in the morning with lots of happy and drunk goblins. See you, everybody. And all the, you can imagine them all, all the goblins crying as we go. Oh. So, Andy, you're the uh, driver. What route are you t- Can you try moving that token and see what happens? The party token. I was told that you should be able to move it. 
this one. Yeah. On. Yeah, it does move. I've just put I've yeah. been able to put my mouse over. All right, so you can actually you can do the route. Uh, so you can travel nine miles by dog sled, then they've got a rest for three hours, and then you can travel another six miles. And, and that's how far you can get in a deer without incurring exhaustion. So you can do the route for the uh the party then. Where are you heading as you are driving? Do you want to stroke your targets, I think. I think they wanted to go dodge. All oh, right, shit, so would out. Yes, you're right. You're not wrong. Hang on. So you move nine miles initially. Right. God damn it. Yeah, so you, you travel to there, you rest for two hours, you have no encounter. Do you want to give me an animal handler roll to see if you get a bonus or a penalty on your mm-hmm. movement for the deer? Uh, a 13 is a minus one, so you travel another five miles for the rest of the deer. Right. If the ten trails are road, so if you hit the road, uh, you can move faster. So you that's as far as you get for the deer. That makes it a lot easier. You, you can navigate now. You have another oh. quiet deer with no encounters. And are you then camping? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, knock a ration off and four rations for the dogs. Someone left to else will have to knock the dogs' ones off because we need rations of Targos. Oh. I've not, oh, not consumed rations effect as the target already has this effect. All, All right. right. It's because, um, it uh, hang on, I need to expire a round on you there. There you are. So you now consume your rations. Right. I've got five left, so I need to stock up. Oh, yeah. I can't afford to, to, to feed the doggies. Sorry. Uh, how many How many do we need for the dogs? Uh, four yeah. rations. Oh, four. I'll do that. Okay. Lovely. There we go. Because you're, now, you're yeah, on, now on an eight dog sled, so you can carry more weight. Right. So you uh, feed the dogs. You spend the night. Nothing bad happens to you, which is good. Uh, you have a long rest. I think you've already rested, though, haven't you? So that's here, 16. Uh, again, clear skies. It, the weather seems to be holding for you. You spent a pleasant night and set off in the morning. I will help and with the um, and How are you going to do that, Dave? I'll talk nice. Okay. I mean, you have a cleric. You could be giving him guidance, but never mind. I, cast guidance on me. I can do that, but I don't know how. But, you know, there's a moment and I'll work it out. It can't be rocket surgery, can it? Uh, guided strike. Uh, can't, no, no. Is, what is guide? Is guidance a cantrip? Yeah. Is it ritual oh. as well? No, it's cantrip. It's cantrip, it's free. Do, um, how do I target Andy? Uh, you you just drag it and drop it on, uh, drag the effect on him on the combat tracker. Oh, that's the thing. I'm putting me, um, <laughs> I keep forgetting. The, the check. <laughs> 1d4 roll Check 1d4 Yeah there you go uh, Andy so can you roll An animal handling With advantage please That can be We've got clerics Full of awesome, awesome spells And Bracey just forgets To use them Look at all, look at that man uh, 17 still means You get a minus 1 But uh, that would have been Like an 11 actually, actually you know It occurred to me That it was either Asia forgets to cast the spells or it's some part of his background secret that he's got these spells, but I, you know, maybe only to use them on his own race or something. So, uh, nine miles and then five miles. So you, you, you have miles. a break. Well, I, we'll get the road at five. Yeah. Uh, are you going straight? Are you going across to Ice Lodge to grab some of that mammoth food? Oh, I cutting straight across. Because uh, yep. obviously there's a whole shitload of meat there. You'll probably get a hundred pounds of that meat on the back of the champion on the back of the uh, sled. Well, if, yeah, so you've reached someone, that. If Oof. somebody would care to load it up. Ah, so I haven't been doing much. So me and Ace will help load up the meat and the barrel. Right, right so I need to. I'll give him a hand. Oh. Has the wolf stuck around with us, by the way? Um, he has been following you so far, but he's still outside at the goblins. I don't blame him. Um, so uh, actually, I'm gonna have to have separate piles of meat now. Um, because I'm gonna have. We'll try doing it this way. We'll see how it works. I guess we've got a hundred pounds on the on the sled and a hundred pounds left at the ice lodge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, don't know if you can alter that in the party. I items until you've got it but you can take the individual meat out to so you, so you take eight pounds out to feed the dogs you can take eight of them out and then delete them so it's basically so that you can do stuff without me having to do everything for you and are you going to grab one of the barrels of whale oil yeah while you're there okay um you manhandle it on the back of a tensor's floating disc uh, which groans under the weight it'll be fine and then it's going to be mammoth curry isn't it so andy you can uh-huh. do, uh you spend maybe an hour loading up uh, so you can do another four miles today because you failed uh, well you didn't fail you only got a partial success on your travel and you spent an hour loading up so you head to the road and then uh, camp for the night on the road I guess yeah yeah awesome it's on the 21st of hammer it's hammer time sorry stop hammer time yeah, 21st of hammer so you need to take eight pounds of meat out for the animal are you cooking some of the mammoth meat up for the rest of the party as well yeah good plan uh, hey quick mammoth curry say about what three or four pounds yeah or five well five pounds i used to make for five i would say what yeah eight or something whatever 
Well, five five pounds ought to be enough because there's like the sort of two of Asia, two little ones, two relatively normal sized people, and our little four, uh, our little four hit point mate. So eighty seven pounds left in the sled, so I can just tick that, and it, and then you can still access it. It's much easier that way. Oh, right. Uh, again, completely unnecessarily en- no encounters as you travel through the wilderness. Uh, you it's can- because everything's dead, Richie. Everything's dead. All of the things that are wandering uh, around. And then you can. Dead. Uh, it's that other party that's running ahead of yeah, us as well. He's cool. that killing everything. Yeah. Uh, you can do five miles in an hour, Andy, and you've got right. three hours of uh, travel. You've got you can travel three hours and then you've got to rest the dogs for three hours. Avoid Bryn Shander because they might recognise our friend. <laughs> Oops, let's not pop the bridge and it. it might be easier to uh just go straight north then and cut out the road or do you want to do you want to stick to the road where it's relatively quiet I, 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 yeah, we'll know, I thought we were going to sell that barrel I'm going to get next 10 percent we can't really go on to bridge shander while we've got this guy with us though so. yeah it's oh, true. Yeah. yeah so we'll if we go to if we go to targos we'll drop him off have a word with garrett um Drop the tusks off to be grim short or whatever, and then what? Once we're looking a bit more squeaky clean, we'll nip down to Bryn Shander and and uh, sell the whale oil. Yeah, right, I'll I'll pop in. The, I'll knock on Garrett's door. Uh, Garrett is at home and uh, he greets you warmly, embraces you warmly, uh, one by one. Friends, come in. Have some we'll, cider. We'll head in and we'll carry in two giant mammoth tusks with us. Wow, okay, I have uh, not seen a mammoth in quite some time. Where's your lovely husband? Uh, he's out the back, he comes out uh, wearing his scrimshaw and apron, holding a tool uh, between his teeth, he beams at you as he sees you. I'll say, we brought you something to scrimshaw. Wow, that is going to take a little while, there's quite a lot of it. Well, I'll tell you what, you put the work in and we'll split the profit, how's that sound? That sounds fantastic, yes. And Garrett, my friend, I've got a job that you might be able to do, and it should be pretty straightforward. Whale oil's still in much demand? Very much so, yeah, it sells for um, sells for like 25 gold a barrel. A big barrel? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was worth more than that. Uh, Oh. It's 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 valued at fifty gold. Um, so you can get tw- um twenty five gold in normal places or thirty gold in bridge under. Well, we've got four barrels of this stash as well as the one barrel we've got. Um, if you go and pick it up and drop it off and sell it at Bryn Shander and drop our name, so you'll get a bonus. Um, how about we call it thirty gold to you? Okay. So you get your map out and uh... yeah. Explain to him where it is. He's going to have to probably take an idiot with him to help load it, um, and he'll need to make a few trips. But basically, just I'll get a bridge shander, drop our name, and we'll make arrangements that the notes come in. So oh. take it to a certain shop. Or oh, how these high level player characters are like, only oh, 30 gold. Like at first level, you're like yeah, getting paid five to, gold. Yeah, I forgot 30 a gold is a lot of money. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so that's 150 gold for five. So that, that is a shit lot of money. Have you got a spare room? Um, I have. I don't think I can fit all of you in the room, though. I uh, need a favour. The, the wolf will stay outside of Targos. Yeah. Um, I need a favour, right? Before you go moving these barrels about, can you take my friend and his wolf companion up to Lonelywood for me? Absolutely. Uh, I'm in your debt. Uh, I, I'll help I'll, you any time I can. I've wrote him a note. He's going to start working on our inn in Bryn Shander. Uh, in Lonelywood, sorry. Right. Okay. Um, but he wants to out to He's had a few problems in Bryn Shander with the family, if you know what I mean. Oh, he's keeping his head down. Oh, okay. I, uh, um, I he's understand got a... the need to be quiet. And I need... A... Is there a me- anyone running messages around this area? Because I... Uh, was it... But Bremen that we met that girl. Which girl? The girl that was the one who chatted up at the bar. I t- oh, mean, um, the one the that biologist. Was yeah. Uh, the biologist was at Bremen. Yes. Does anyone run messages to Bremen? Uh, yeah. There's like a a, a a one person like messenger service running a single <coughs> dog kick sleds between the towns. <coughs> Right, I'll go and see that guy, write a note to her, uh, saying that we, we've, could she ask if our our sea monster friend can drop a few fish off every day to Lonely Wood at the docks or um, another friend of ours, and that we're going to set up, we're setting a tavern up at Lonely Wood if she wants to pop in any time. Right, okay, you need to put that in rhyme clues because I'll never remember all of this. Yeah. Um, so, yes, you are talking about the, uh, the researcher who is called Tally, T-A-L-I, the researcher Tally is in Bremen and she is the one who is making best friends with Duali 
Right, so you want to send a message to Bremen. I'm writing down. Um, so it's going to be like two silver pieces to use the uh, messenger service if you want to send a message. I'll pay that. I'm not short of silver. I'll buy it because I want to get rid of some weight. This is 150 gold. Is that all? Is that all? It's 150 gold pieces. You can live like a king for 150 days in an inn and have food and heat. <clears throat> can you buy armour here? Targos, you can. <clears throat> Let me have a look at Targos' rating. It has a rating of services three. Yes, so you can buy armour at standard prices. Right, so I'll buy a meal and I'll buy some more rations. Two silver pieces, aren't they? I don't know. They're in the items, Dave. Click on the items thing and just type in rations and they'll come up. Yeah, I need I, I need some... Uh... Oh, yeah. I'm going to buy rations as well. Apologies. Rations one day. D&D plays Hamburg, Dave. Two, five silver pieces. Yeah. So you're not relying on the mammoth then. You're actually going to have dried fish as well for a varied diet. Yeah, exactly. At least you'd be regular. I kind of find rations on here. Right, click the item button. Right, does it... I did. Right, it's got your items. uh, In the group, does it say all, yeah? Yep. At the top? Yeah. Yeah, so at the bottom, next to where the button that says all is, confusingly, okay, that's a type box. Above attunement, you just type rations in there, or just type rat. How many silvers in a gold? Sorry, I'm thick. Ten. Ten. You found it, Tracy? Yep, typed in rations, but nothing's coming up. I've still got, like, a load of... Have you, lo- the- have you loaded the player's handbook in your assets? I think you did. <clears throat> yeah, D&D player's handbook. I've got in the group top part at the top. Yeah, as long as you've got group all at the top, and then underneath where it says page one of 60, or page whatever. Page one of five. Yeah. But it's, like, it's got amulets and stuff, and abacus. It's not, like, food stuff. Uh, yeah, because there's, there's multiple pages. But if you just type into that box under where it says page one, just type rat into the box and press enter all right, right okay i just i didn't know i could just hit the enter button i was thinking well where's the button that i press the yeah. mouse because it comes out with adamant i bless play but you're not getting one of those oh no dm should ever give a player adamant armor why would they even be in there minute. right i've bought two weeks of rations with me and bracy because i figure it's worth carrying extra food hang on right hang on uh, hmm. then i figure we'll head to bryn and throw the oil and then head off to the dot dot instead dot. of converting andy you could have just knocked off like you know 10 gold and then bought 20 rations with it yeah, yeah and then yeah. where it says rations one day just up that number by 20 or whatever the conversions there only for like things where you need it basically well you need to convert if you, if you can do the maths in your head so two rations is one gold piece if you want to do it that way just knock your gold off and up your number of rations i can't do some i i really can't i'm mathematically challenged right Will you excuse me for two minutes? Yeah, we'll take a five-minute bio break. Let's go to Bryn Shander, flog off the uh, oil and stuff, and then uh, let go to the dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. Do we need to have a couple of days in Bryn Shander to get the furry stuff sewn in? It would take three days, yes. You've already handed in some. But if you wanted to wait, it would be a three-day wait. Right. Well, or you, can, or you can come back in. Why don't we hand in the mammoth, and then when everything's uh, when everything's tanned, then we'll wait till we have an opportunity to be in town for three days, and we'll get the sewing done. Yeah, good idea. Because otherwise, we're going to have to sit for three days in Bryn Shander with our thumbs up our jacksies doing note. Okay, I've added a timeline for the pelts tanned. Ah. So they'll be ready any time after that. And then basically you're going to have to spend a couple of days waiting because you haven't got a spare cold weather club to uh, while yeah. they saw them into your claws. So you hand that in and then obviously you'll still have to pay for the labour and whatever. So it'll be half the price as you oh, are that's, providing that's the raw material. <clears throat> Are you sure? Have you seen how much it is for lining? Well, yeah, I know, but you know, at, at, like at the end of the day, we're kind of needed. It's true because you need to roll a forty. The maximum you roll at the moment is a thirty-six, which is horrendous. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's, it's twenty-five GP each to have your cold weather clothing converted. That's already halved. Twenty-five GP to have your cold weather clothing insulated as well as well as fur lined because we've already got you've already got fur lined yeah yeah so fur lining goes in the middle and basically um i looked it up with the inuit uh, the, it's a second layer of cold weather clothing effectively sewed with the fur face inward so you've got a basically composite cold weather clothing i shall knock 25 gold off me and racy you don't have to pay that now but you can if you want to just pay for it I'd now and it in case i lose all my money in case you lose all your money uh, uh, the rest you're going to pay your 25 Aye, gold that's an idea Russell, then, uh, yeah definitely then it's already paid so 25 you said 25 yes right right 25 or 
all that lovely money. But just remember, money's no object by fourth level. Sorry, I'm just being facetious at other gems there. Yeah, right. And I shall put a note in my journal. Yeah. Oh, when this campaign finishes, I'm going to have to do it in in Lum of memory video for all of the like familiars and sled oh, yeah. and sled dogs. Yeah. Right. Well, dropping off a bunch of money and a bunch of furs and uh, maybe some buckets of weight to help it on its way. Oh, sorry, Rich. What date is it? The date today is the. You can go to the calendar and check. Actually, if you click on the calendar, it is the twenty first of Hammer. I, I just didn't want to close that thing. That's all right. I've just. Uh, it's, uh, so how do you? Uh, and the sled is now full of little little wax paper wrapped rations, thanks to uh, Lantesh and a whole shit of cho- shitload of chopped up mammoth. That's how we like it. I shall summon my new villain. Number three. Ah, oh, <laughs> hello, number three. Bucky number three. But Ben, why am I called number three? We will find out. Speaking of which, I know you haven't leveled the level five yet, but Gracie would need 300 gold pieces worth of diamonds were you to inquire that about getting some before you need them because the lowest level of res has to be cast within one minute of death so you can't drag somebody off to town buy a bunch of diamonds and then res them they're like the ninth level ones hmm. i want to show by twinger that i found uh he's in Brinchander in the north look oh you are in Brinchander. you've yes you moved back to Brinchander. yes yeah. yeah, so you head off to the north to to, to see Danica. Um, you show him the statue, uh, and he, he doesn't mind where he caught Danica. like, hi, Ben. Uh, it's Lillian. So pleased to see you. Uh, still not making much progress. Haven't heard from any of my Arcane brothers. You show him the statue, and it, you notice it's exactly the same height as a Twinger, uh, and he holds his hands over his face and slowly shakes his head backwards and forwards, uh, and then does, like, screws his fists up as if he's crying. And... Uh, <laughs> Because he can't communicate, Dave. He points at the Twinger, points at himself, and then, like, draws a finger across his throat. Oh, it's a dead, dead Twinger. Twi- I'll telepathy ask him. Oh, you got you. telepathy. Talk to Twingers now. Hi, Ben. Uh, oh, it's been so nice to talk to you. How's your beard? Is your beard still clean? I like it when your beard. I'll ask him. Well, is, um, is, is it big? Is it clean, though? Have you left that thing? You notice it's chattering intently in your ma- in your mind, and you're just trying to get your head through. Oi, um, Yes, it's very sad. When my people die, we turn to stone. Um, uh, do we bury them or? Yes, uh, put them, put them in the earth where we turn to, to the elements. Yeah, I'll, I'll bury. So you take it outside and uh, go to the graveyard. Do the best to, you can to thaw out some ground and bury the poor tree. Ask Daniel, Daniel, if wants to ask anything, I'll ask him about it. Um, yes, yeah, she asks a, a few questions, uh, which you you spend uh, half an hour or so going over, uh, and indeed, uh, the very very flighty sort of like pixie like whether they keep losing their train of thought and moving on a different subject um, but each twinger has uh, what they call a hobby uh, and a hobby is something that they they like to do and uh, it sounds more intense for a twinger than it would be just a normal person calling it a hobby which you've noticed the behaviour but the, it depends it's independent for each twinger what their fascination is so what is his hobby? Um, his hobby is um, he, he's fascinated with uh play acting at uh, having tea parties they don't seem to have they don't seem to have a standard sort of human way of looking at things um is uh, like a carpet in the town so i can get like a little table and chairs and it's oh yeah you can do that uh, or there'll be a, a doll maker or a, a, a toy shop of some description um, <coughs> I'll, I'll buy him how much cost i don't know like what silver piece maybe to buy like a doll's tea set uh he's over the moon um and uh bless the little fella me so happy, Ben. Me so happy. And uh, he plays with Danica with the, the little tea set. Uh, Danica says, uh, you ask him how he changes the weather. Um, and at first he doesn't understand, but then he, he says he just kind of thinks it. And uh, the weather around them changes to whatever they are thinking about, which would lean towards their elemental nature. So it seems to be some kind of innate ability rather than a magic spell or anything. Danica looks quite downcast at this and says that if it's an innate ability, it's unlikely that she would be able to replicate it. Now, is she just saying that, Dave? What does she have? Um, I will... Is she telling... Can I have a... <laughs> ah, push it off. Uh, in a second. Oh, my ears are bleeding. Thank God for that. Hello, darling. Hey, Brucey. Welcome Good home. Evening, my friend. And she'll try to get contact us near my office. Guys. Yeah, she's having trouble contacting the Arcane Brotherhood. <laughs> Got to run into a bunch of event the sunlight. 
Right, so your business concluded in Bryn Shander, or are you going to check out what I was discussing with you earlier on? Or is there anywhere you want to go? Do you want to go and see Howell? Do you want to go to the temple? Any Anything else? Or are we heading out south? Oh, I won't. There is one thing I need to do. Uh, I need to top up me Halo's kit. Why don't you drop this half off while you're there? Yes, good thinking. Good thinking. Uh, wait a minute, if I just work out how much I need to spend. Yeah, and the sell the barrel. And did you? And are you sending Bob up to Lonelywood? Is he still with you? Um, we'll send him up to Lonelywood. Because he can't <sighs> travel with Garrett's sleds, but he can walk up. Oh well, we'll keep him with us in that case. And Tracy was drooling some more over the Arcane Guardian. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, I have got that place up north somewhere where we thought the tower would be. Actually, mm-hmm. it might be worth having a look at that tower because is the dot 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 dash 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 dot 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 malarkey desperate? Well, it's it was every twelve hours. It's down to every eight hours. Dave gets yeah, the message. Yeah, let's try it. Let's check that first. The, the tower's going nowhere, so let's check that, and then well, the the tower will be the next stop after we've done the dot dot dot. Very well. So, Andy, you uh, top your hitters kit up, yeah? Yeah. And is there anything else you guys want to do? I don't think so. Haven't you got to drop that heart off? Oh, aye, yes. Uh, I'd better go and say howl quickly and drop off that uh, wizened little black chunk of a heart. Uh, so he's happy to see you and you tell him you've got a troll heart and he's all excited and he's like, ooh, and then you open it up and he's like, he looks confused at it and pokes it and goes, it's crispy. What about the frost giant heart? You didn't cheer the little frost giant heart out, did you? Uh, think, we didn't do it. We, we didn't get around to doing it. Ah, uh, uh, but, but... Uh, I can ask Howell, what about the Frost Giant's heart, if I could uh, source one of those? Uh, many things have alchemical uh, applications. I would certainly take a look at it. I, right. I'd definitely be interested in any of <sighs> that kind of thing. Is, is it just hearts you're after? Or, I mean, you know, have you got a list, like a wants list? Uh, not really. Uh, the ice troll hearts are very handy because they can uh, be turned into resist frost portions and uh, it's quite they're quite good sellers at the minute as you can see although I can see you're strutting around with your uh, cold weather clothing are you in like a mankini or something <laughs> how dare you sir no 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 I've just got me normal me normal gear on he's just wearing budgie uh, smugglers but with the budgie smugglers and uh, thigh high boots uh, you, basically yeah you've missed it Andy is now wearing thigh high boots Brissy. <laughs> We'll have the stuff called a room font yeah. from the that is guy galaxy. Yeah. Or Mad Vibes. Right. Um Does he uh, come from Kazakhstan by chance? I would be interested in most unusual monster parts if I didn't make deal with them, but the heart is usually the part that's used in uh, portions and what have you. He says, Well, I'm not sure what I can do with this, but I will certainly take it as uh <coughs> Well, you're welcome to at home, you old mate. And if I come across anything else, I'll uh, I'll know where to bring it. Excellent. Thank Crunt. So, uh, with a cheery wave, he continues to inspect the uh, crispy little object in the box. I mean, Earl specifically said he stuck his hands in his chest and used burning hands on it. So, it's in quite the state, to be fair. Apologies. It's all right. So, do you think, since we're sort of going south anyway, uh, do we call in back at, at, at the Ice Lodge and uh, relieve the giant? of its heart while we're passing. Do on the way back because we've got to pass on the way back. Ah, yes, good point. Yes, Where yes, are we at the yeah. minute? Cause I can't see us on the map. Uh, we can take another... Oh, but the, the wheel oil is getting taken care of. I. Oh, sorry, just ignore me. I thought you were going to check out... Oh, I thought that. We are, but we'll do dot, dot, dash first because right. really, I've really got to look for something up by where the mage tower is. My interests <clears throat> are invested towards that area. <laughs> Uh, right, so are you spending the evening in Bryn Shander? You've only done a little bit of travelling, but it will eat into your travelling time, or are you just going to push on out? No, see, we'll have a pint. I would imagine you'd spent maybe uh, like a couple hours shopping about. We'll have a pint and a pie and put my feet up for the night, and then we'll leave in the morning. Fine, we'll, we'll have a bath. Oh, I a bath. A nice idea. bath. So, uh, yeah, a gold piece for normal rooms and two gold pieces for... A nice bar hot bath, and uh, yeah. we'll see a gold piece to stable the sled and the dogs. Nice. I'll pay three for a bath and pl- stable the sled. P- to bath the dogs and uh, yeah. wash the sled down. Just press to all that. <laughs> but you don't have to take a bath. You can just press to digitate yourself. But it's, there's something different about lying in a nice steaming hot whale oil heated bath, though, compared mm. to just press to digitation in yourself, isn't it? Well, that's true. And you can't go to sleep in a press to digitation. I like to play when you rub a duck. <laughs> hey, your private life's your own. <laughs> Oh. 
Right, so full of food and uh, having had a bath and a good night's sleep, you uh, you decide to head south. Are you heading down the road, Andy? Yeah, well, might as well. We'll make better time on the road. Yeah, you can make five miles on the road if you want to give me the old animal handling. Right, you up. You want to do the uh, help slash? Yep, I'll cast what to call it on them. Guidance, yeah, just drag guidance and drop it on Andy's. Is that right? Hang on, does that mean I roll? I can't remember. I've got a short memory. Do I roll with advantage or do I just roll? Uh, you roll with advantage if somebody's helping you. Which they are. But Brace is also casting guidance on you, which gives you the plus D4. So now when you roll, you'll roll right. really well. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, you cast the wrong effect, Brace. It's the one that says roll 1D4. Okay, sorry. Uh, so Andy gets a, a, a 17. So yeah, so you can do... Um, I don't know how far down the road it is. Are you heading down the road? Yeah, well, hang on. I'll, I'll move. Yeah, you can do five miles an hour. You said nine miles, didn't you? Uh, no, no, yeah, that's that. that's on uh, snow. You can do five miles an hour on the road. Oh. Uh, so go basically as far down as you want until you want to turn off. Uh, probably down to here, and then we'll turn off and follow that river. So you can do that in uh, sort of three hours. Right. Well, two, two, and, two and three quarter hours. Right. And then why don't we stop for a pie and a pint? <laughs> I love it. Frigid winds today on the weather. <laughs> and then you've got another two hours of travelling, which case you can do six miles. You stop right, for a so pile and a pint. Uh, we'll probably come off the road here, I think. Yeah. yeah. So six miles, did you say? Yes, uh, six miles there. to there. Now, once you travel, you'll have to camp there for the night. Uh, right. And once you travel another mile, sort of uh, in that direction, you'll actually hit mountains. So then it will slow down considerably and you'll right. only be doing uh, uh, two miles an hour. Well, that's all right. We're nearly there. Yeah, so you camp overnight. Once again, no encounters. God damn it. Yeah, you have a pleasant long rest. No. <clears throat> Are we feeding the dog on mammoth? The dog's on mammoth? Yeah, we well, might as well. So £79 of mammoth you've got on you, uh, and everybody knocks a ration off. And you spend a quiet, pleasant evening uh, in the foot of the mountains, the spine of the world. There's still plenty of trees about, so you can even chop some down. And uh, Well, you can't really chop down and burn trees. You can uh, find some dead, dead branches and make a campfire and spend a pleasant evening under the stars as Richard answers the calendar to the 23rd of Hammer. You wake the next uh, I can only describe it as morning because it's slightly less dark than the rest of it, ready to push into the mountains. Uh, Dave, you are feeling antsy, you're feeling edgy, you're sweating a bit, um, you're not sure why. Do you want to share this with the party or? Yeah, I'll tell you. I'm getting this weird feeling. Getting... It's weird that Dave knows exactly where it is for it being a telepathic signal. Yeah. Shall, shall we push on, chaps? Yep. You'll be wanting an animal handling role, won't you? I am. I'm just grabbing some information. Yeah, give me an animal handling role as you for the first time in two years push up into the mountains uh, no, you can do the advantage guys. yeah you need to drop the guidance effect yeah. on the current just roll again Andy and I'll, I'll just this time I'll do the d4 a plus one so you roll again advantage. Yeah. I'm saying just roll again and see what you get it's Sweet. a 21 you get an extra miles worth of travel as you uh, expertly guide the sled between the trees and the forest yeah <clears throat> Uh, and a couple of hours later, you pull up into the mountains and round into what I can only describe as some mountains. A strange purple glow is visible from round the outcrop of the next mountain. It's just out of sight. Is there any wildlife around? Any, any birds in the air? Any, any, you know, anything on the trees? There is not. Hmm. Uh, that don't look natural. The, the dogs uh, start to whine in, uh, and uh, reacting uh, uh, badly. Andy, you can feel them tugging at the reins and, and like trying to pull away. I, I think maybe we ought to back off a mile and walk it. Uh, but then as you pull, you decide to pull up and uh, as you do, you see the snow writhe to the side of the sled. Two fat white worm-like creatures with uh, proboscises burst up one either side of the sled. Uh, I whip me short sword out and stab one of them. Let's roll some initiatives, but you uh, none of you are surprised because you <clears throat> are so awesome and have high perceptions. Right. Okay, uh, round one. Corrin surprisingly goes first. Yeah, you, you, the dogs whine and howl, and you uh, 
You pull up, these things burst from the snow, uh, but you're already moving. You whip your short sword out, and it's right next to you. Is there a picture uh, of them? There I is. Shall st- I shall stub it. Ooh, horrible. I'm not going to look at them, let me tell you. Yeah, so you're already moving as the creatures burst through. You, you literally shout a one, and there's, the snow's moving, and the burst. The, the dogs are pawing and howling in fear. Oh, go yeah, ahead, I'm... go all stubby, sir. I will go all stubby if I may. Uh, wait a minute. Is uh, you attacked? You've got the other one targeted. Uh, I don't. Hang on. Yeah, you're. Uh, you've targeted I'm, yourself. I'm, so- <laughs> I'm sorry. I, well, the only thing I clicked on was that carrion crawler just above and slightly to the left of me. So I don't know what happened there. Hi, that one. You blow your own foot off. Yeah, you shoot yourself. You stab yourself in the foot with your short sword. All right, try again, Andy. Right in the knee, Andy. Right. Oh, aye, that's a point. Uh, hang on. Now, wait a minute. Which one of those do I put on myself? I never blade and remember. Uh, it's already on yourself. Right. So, so I just all make... you need is the effect that says... Uh, uh, the first one, Tosser's yeah, Mark. Tosser's Mark, yeah. The other, right. one, well, the other one's that, always on you. That's me bonus, Dota. Why is it saying that you're targeting both, though? That's what I don't understand. Oh, I'm not. I, maybe I've dragged the same one twice. Hang on, I'll delete this totem. Uh, right, so it's screwy. So I'm going to re-drag them on, okay? So that one goes oh. there. You'll have to re-target it, Andy. I will uh, right, right That on. one goes there, the drunken right. one. Right, you put them both on, and I'll... Right, hang on, have I got it targeted? It has effect. It has its tosser's mark on. Right, but have I got it targeted? There you have now. Right. Yeah, there you go. It went, it went all strange there for a minute. It did, rather. Right, so let's uh, let's try that short sword and business again, shall yeah, we? So leaping out of the seat, drawing your short sword as you're moving, you jam, bam, you, you slam your sword straight into this disgusting fat worm. <coughs> and it... Right. it <laughs> as you stab it. Sadly, that goes next, so it... It's, it's going to bite me. Tentacles. Uh, it's oh. awful, wriggly tentacles. What, Dave? Oh, because he stabbed himself. You're right, Dave. There you go. It's unwounded. Now we'll have to do something about that, won't we? Uh, so the tentacles, Andy, reach out. Oh, we don't like that. Oh shit! You've targeted yourself again, Andy. No, no, that's the the. Uh, All right. The worm well, has created him. He's got it on himself, though. It's fine. Ah, All right. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Andy's targeting the creature, and the creature's targeting him. Right. All right. Okay. <laughs> I thought the creature had done an Andy. Right. All the out. tentacles uh, lash round you, Andy, uh, and leave mm-hmm. little awful sucker marks that burn slightly acidically. We don't like that. Uh, you fail your save. I thought I might. Uh, you are poisoned and paralysed. Oh, look. Again, because, you know, it's not the same. And then, and then it gets to bite you. I thought it as might. As it pulls you with its tentacles to its awful, like, looks like an insect mole with teeth, as if something can't get even grosser. Yeah, it hits. Yeah, I thought it might. Uh, heavily damaging you. Lan Tesh. <laughs> um... Right. Can I target the one that's damaged? Yes. Without a penalty. Yes. Right. If you're if you're if you're firing something that needs it to hit roll, you will still be at disadvantage automatically because you're in combat range of another creature. Oh well, that's what I meant. Shit. But if you oh, like, if you're targeting shit. with a magic missile or something else. Oh, <coughs> nah, it's just that's the only one I've got that hasn't got a flipping roll. Um. Yeah. Well, go on. I'll, I'll just use magic missile on it. That's. No, I'll, I'll, one, I know. Crap! You've got Bobby here as well, haven't you? And I'll tell me how to fly up out of reach of these. Okay, you fly, your owl flies out of the way. Just takes it out of the way of the combat. Just out of the way, yeah. Uh, Bob, I'll roll Bob's initiative because you have Bob with you. There you go. Bob is going to f- lay the smack down on some candy asses. Very good, Trizzy. So go and do your magic missile thing. I did. I got 10 on, on the damaged one. To the chased uh, one. I, uh, yeah, I. that's it. Is that your turn then? You're on a sled. You're on a sled at the moment, so. All oh, right, okay. Put your mate- yeah, I, I did earlier on. I, I uh, think it should still be on. should still be shown, I it think. It should be. Right, so you're, yeah, in, it is. You're, you're in the sled, which is like sort of. Is it moving? Is this, are, are we moving whilst this is going on? Yeah, no. No, we stopped. No, you, oh, right, you okay. stopped because Andy was like, oh, it's uh, it's a bit dodgy, this. I think we should stop and go back. And as he did, the uh, snow erupted. Oh, Aisha, right, okay. you are next, sir. Go, Aisha. Right. I will up? throw a hail on Corrin. Thank you. Corrin's gone all Han Solo in uh, Carbonite. <laughs> 
and then I will sprint and attack the one that's attacked him. Yeah, there's a one next to your mind. It'll get an attack if you move away from it. Oh, God. All right, then. In that case, I will cast Guiding Bolt at the one that's attacking. Um, you can't. You can only cast a cantrip. So you cast Toll the Bell or another cantrip. Okay, Toll the Bell it is. Ding dong. <laughs> bong bong. It feels it saves, so you do D12 damage. Nice. It, uh, it takes... Uh, some damage and the bell vibrates all the way through it. And is that your turn? Yes. Sandman, uh, right up next to this creature. I will burning hands its ass. You're all about the burning hands. I am because I can't cast anything else because I'm in melee with it. Right, you burn it and it got squee and like it flies. And uh, one of its tentacles comes off, but it's still got them wrapped around Andy. And, and it looks like it's going to take a chunk out. Uh, yeah, wolf. Bob, who do you want Bob to attack? Hey, sure. one Are you sure? Are you Andy. The one that's attacked Andy? Yep. Right, it moves away. The other one gets a free attack on it. It hits Bob. He takes three damage. I believe he's immune to the poison. This is immune to quite a bunch of stuff. Bob can take it. Um, let me have a look at Bob. Uh, immune to charm, frightened, paralyzed, or poison. Yeah, so the poison has no effect on him, but he does hit him. He loses once more some damage. <laughs> Taking what did he take? three. So he's now lost a total of 18 hit points altogether that can't be repaired. Oh. Uh, and then he dreadful glares upon the carrion crawler, who saves. Uh, so he shrugs and then just batters it with his fist, which bounces off its chitin. And then he looks quite angry about this. Ben. So are you pulling out your new axe? Yeah. Pulls out his new axe, slices into it. Oh, it's a good hit. And you cut through it and it sprays awful insect goo on you. Anything else? Nope. Okay. So the second one goes, uh, it wriggles those tentacles at you, Dave, as you have just twonked at one. Uh, it misses, though. Uh, so it tries to bite you at no bonus. Uh, and again, it misses. Owl stays out the way. <coughs> New round. Corrin is still paralyzed. He'll get a save. There you go. He fails again. Story of your life, Andy. Oh, no. Lantesh, if anybody's going to get paralyzed, it's going to be Corrin. Does the one that's on... Current look it looks bad. really bad, uh, but it has its tentacles wrapped around him and it's uh, about to take a big bite out. Okay, then I'm going to cast Magic Missile at level two on it. Jesus. Honest to God, them dice rolls. Nice. So you blast it with force and it looks like it's ready to drop, but it just doesn't want to let go, Andy. Are you doing anything else for the rest of your round? No. Nope. Okay, here's it. It is your turn. Um, yes, I'm just... I will fire Guiding Ball on it. Oh, that's attacking Andy. Remember, you'll be in a penalty to hit because you're in melee range with another one. But go ahead. Do you want them to do that? I'm just saying. Oh, okay. Then in that case, no, I will cast. Will I be in a disadvantage for Toll the Dead? No. It's only for things that are uh, an attack roll to hit. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll cast Toll the Dead then again. It saves. It does no damage. God damn it. And you throw in another heal. Yep. Thank you. Corin feels a little bit of sand when once more. Bernie, Bernie. <sighs> Yeah, use the spell sort of baby. Right, it burns once more but does not die. The thing looks like it be on its last legs. Bob's turn again. Uh, he can't dread gears it it's already succeeded. He just beats upon it with his fists. This one hits. Right, he brings his fist down and literally squishes its head. Uh, his fist goes deep into its skull and just icker sprays everywhere. And then he turns his attention to the other one. Is there uh, nowhere to heal? Or not that you know of. Certainly none of your necromancers. Uh, he well, turns his, his dreadful gears. My the, alteration might do it in time. Do you remember the undead horse there that you couldn't heal? So sad. Turns his well, dread gears upon the other one. He fails. Oh, and it's frightened and paralysed. How do you like it? Ben. The drunk chuckle. <laughs> Carrion Crawler is struck by your axe. Uh, sadly, doing less damage than you wished. All right, that's mine. Excellent. Uh, Carrion Crawler can't do anything. Uh, gets a save. Oh, no, it's at the end of the mummy's next turn, it wears off. Uh, Owl is not doing anything, Tracy? No. Nope. Corrin, this time, Corrin. <sighs> Still paralysed. Right, <Yeah>. Lantesh. <coughs> uh, magic missile on... Oh, hmm, no. We'll use... Camper, yeah, I'm thinking about using... Because I'm... Pissing through me uh, spells here. Well, uh, so will it disadvantage paralyzed? <laughs> I think she'll be a disadvantage, but then advantage because it's paralysed, because she's in melee range, so it'll be... Well, it'll can I step back and yes. it not get attacked? Yes, right. it's paralysed. I'll do that. I'll step back so that I'll not be 
at disadvantage to cast anything else. Yeah, um, uh, Bob's dread gears has sorted that that bad boy out. Right. Okay. So I step back. At, you know. So I'm, I, you get the idea. And I will cast scorching ray on it. Right. It stands there. It, this little buggy eyes looks at it. It's like, oh oh. Wait a minute. How? Do I just drop the the one dice on it? There'll be the hit roll, and then there'll be a damage roll. So do the, the hit roll first. All right. Okay. Yeah. And then do oh the... yeah, I get. To... I was wondering why I got two dice. And then do the right. damage roll because you get three rears, but you have to do hit damage, hit damage, hit damage. Oh shit! Put four up. Yeah, you need to you need to do your hit first, then your damage because. It... All right. Well, I've hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but <laughs> the, right. The, the problem the... the problem is, Tracy, if you roll three hits right and one of them's a crit, it won't remember that because it only remembers the last roll. So you've got to go hit damage, hit damage, hit damage on the on the scorching rears. Otherwise, you'll lose a crit. Basically. Oh right. Oh, so I've got a hit for each one. Right. Okay. So you, yes. Right. I get you. So you hit with the first one. Do the damage. It's done three dice again. Why? <laughs> right. So do the damage for the first one. Is it just two yeah. dice? All right. Okay. Right. Okay. And then you've rolled for the second one. Then roll the damage for the second one. So you you keep rolling and rolling. You've got to do sorry hit damage right. hit damage. I picked anyway. up the D twenty and I couldn't drop it. Right. If you drop it, if you the... drop it anywhere but in the chat, it doesn't. It'll just disappear. All right. Okay. Um. And oh, well, do I have to roll again for my third one? Yeah. Do I get two dice for that? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm confused. It's, All it's right. paralyzed. Your advantage because it's paralyzed. I didn't know you got that on a spell though. Yeah, because it's got to hit roll. All right. Okay. I'm with. Uh, sorry, I've got a bit confused there. Uh, right. That's my goal then. All right. So you just blast it through. Three times with uh, rears and it doesn't do anything. Isha, you are next. It doesn't look damaged, does not it? Uh, well, it's yeah. damaged, but still, it seems to be taking a lot of pounding from you. All oh, right, guys. Okay. Isha, yeah, it's your turn. Sorry, Matt, I didn't hear that. Right, I uh, walk out with my hammer. Seems like a sensible thing. Give it some. Give it some. This thing's just getting mashed to pieces. It's the poor thing paralysed by Bob's thing. So you smash oh, wow. it. The hammer goes straight in through its skull, Bracy, and uh, with a, 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 a splut of uh, gooey insect bits that sprays over the uh, partly in the <coughs> the party in the sled. Uh, the thing is dead. Everything returns to normality. The animals are still whining. Andy spends a few seconds. Andy eventually. Becomes unparalyzed, spends a few minutes to calm the dogs down. I, mean, I think we should back off to a safe distance and walk in from here. Uh, yeah. I think I should I think I should wrap a bandage around myself. Perhaps you should. Uh, I sh- I'm going to. I shall just target myself. And then shall... Uh, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, Corin r- slaps a quick uh, plaster on himself and uh, feels much, much better. And everybody's <laughs> back to normal. <laughs> All right, so... You kick the dead insect carcasses to the side and, and pull the dogs slightly away and then calm them down. Yeah. So, when you see it at a safe distance, how far? Because you, you're round behind like a rock, a, a mountain outcropping, and you can see this strange purple glow on the other side. Uh, half a mile? Half a mile, yeah. So, what are you going to do with the sled? Are you leaving Bob or are you just going to stake it and leave it? No, we'll leave Bob. Bob, guard the sled. Yeah. Brain the size of a planet. Left guarding the sled. Oh, well. Right, and I'm not going to lie, I've been looking forward to this moment as you round the course of the mountain carefully, having backtracked to the way you fought the two <laughs> creatures. The strangest sight you've ever seen straight to your eyes. Uh, Dave, uh, Ben, begins t- to panic um, and st- staggers back, uh, uh, and Asia actually has to catch him and restrain him. And this <laughs> is the strange sight that may or may not cast- catch your eyes. Hang on a second. I hate this bit because first text is in two separate parts. Let me find this. There you go. So let me bring this. As you trudge deeper into the mountains, an eerie glow betrays the monstrous outline of something stupendous and ominous. It looks like a cephalopod with slimy, ropey tentacles as thick as tree trunks that has tried and failed to bury its immense bulk in the snow. Yeah. That thing at the back. At the back is the, oh dear. The size of. The uh, galleon, a size of a galleon, yes. 
Oh crap! We're going to die again. Uh, at, at this point, Asia has had to grab Ben as he has a panic attack, and then he slowly, slowly calms down. Ferret shell sells for quite a bit, but a component. What, why? Why the panic attack, Ben? What? 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 Why are you so frightened of it? I don't know. There's something in the back of my mind. Terrifying. Don't be frightened. You're with us. Nothing's going to happen to you. Actually, I'd probably be more frightened if I was with us. But that, you know, the thunder's on our side. I mean, look how many times Sanwin's died <laughs> and come back. Does it look like it's looking at us? Uh, no, it's all still, uh, and it just sits there in the darkness. The tentacles are unmoving. Are there any tracks leading off it? Like, you know, uh, these things that attacked us, are it's such young? Are there tracks coming away from it? Uh, no, there's, there's no tracks leading off it. Um, oh, can I get me out? I have a fly round near us, see what's what. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, not and, right, and, not too close. Any signs <laughs> that it's been moving? Like, is it dead or asleep? Uh, currently, it's not moving, but as you watch it for a few moments, as you, you're taking the just sheer alienness of this thing, you see the end of one of its tree trunk sized tentacles just twitch like a cat's tail. Ooh, it's asleep. Let's burn the bastard. Yeah, uh, Dave uh, is uh, sobbing, and uh, Dave, you have a flashback. Uh, of being inside a green transparent cylinder with some kind of sticky gooey liquid all around you. Bubbles come out of your mouth as you try to scream and you're unable to. And nothing comes out because the liquid fills your lungs. Uh, and then there's just like a stunk uh, on the front of the tank or the glass or whatever as this octopus-like tentacle just slaps across the front of the glass and then slowly goes out of your vision. And then your vision goes black again. I still really remember. Oh, this sounds fantastic. This isn't going to get us killed at all. So you were inside of one of those then? Seems like... Or in oh, God. Inside, inside. Yep. In a tube inside. Yep. So... If that's not a creature and it's like a container of some sort, like a house, or why are the tubes ask? twitching? Mm. No, Dave, Dave uh, you it's slowly coming back. You know, it's it's a ship. It's some kind of ship. You were kidnapped. It you can't were... be a ship because there's no sea around here. Has he had the old alien probe up the Jaxi routine? <laughs> I mean, yeah. have, have I heard of spell jammers, Richie? No, you have not. Right, okay. I don't know if you can say. I don't know what. Can you actually say them up or not? Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, fucking hell, that is big. We're going to die so hard, but we should do it anyway. Yeah, but I think I'm going to back off and die at range. So you're still at some distance away, uh, holding it's holding Dave physically down enough. as he goes through all of these stages. <clears throat> there's one, there's one, there's one thought springs through your mind, Dave, uh, and you think, home, home, Greyhawk. That's what it's called. Home is Greyhawk. Never met the man. Oh, I'm oh. a bit called Hawk. Where's, where's Greyhawk? Never it's heard not, of it. No. It's a big world, though. I haven't heard of it everywhere. It, yeah, it must be somewhere down south. Well, <clears throat> by St. Cuthbert, let's get to it, lad. What? Who's that? Who's what? St. Cuthbert? St. Cuthbert. Didn't he have a school? You mean? you mean by Lathander's eyes and ears? He's got me proper confused. Yeah, well, let's go and have a look at this book. Yeah. It must be some kind of radiation leakage or something, or something that it's emitting that's made him go a little bit crazy, I think. Yeah, Pet, well, sit down well, and have a have a drink here. Yeah. I think you should have a little drink and steady your nerves. Yeah, fat, you're going to be fine here with us. Fine. Well, in, and he's cudgel before. I'll look around for this cuthbert bloke. Any sign of him? Doesn't appear to be anybody else with you. Maybe he's, refer he, maybe he's referring to Bob and he's forgot Bob's name or something. I don't know. He's got, it's confusing. He's lost something. Right away, then let's have a look. When I die, he was alive. Can, uh, does <laughs> Meow see anything? Because I can't fly over the... Uh, yeah, you see a, a, a cephalopod shape, a large pair of double doors at the front, but no other apparent exits, um, and an iced over baluster on the front. Right, I'll relay this to... Uh, Look, doesn't look like a creature of anything. It's got doors and there's a, some kind of like ballister on the on the top front part there. Right, let's go and have a look. Then come on, no point standing out here. Yep. Right, so you approach to within 30 feet, and as you do so, uh, what looks to initially oh. be this pristine uh, ship, Ben has described it as, although there are certainly no oceans anywhere near this. Um, you realise that your vision, because it was dark and you were far away, has betrayed you somewhat. The, uh, the large sh shell that makes up the back of the hull is chipped in several places and the tentacles at the front uh, uh, look to be a purple colour but they are shot through with uh, grey patches uh, and one of them 
One of the tentacles is completely grey all the way along the length and is not moving. Looks broke to me. What appeared yeah. to be double doors from a distance, Tr Tracy, is like a large circular sphincter um, with a, what looks like a clenched asshole making the... <laughs> Does anyone have a lot to drink? Because before I go in that hall, I like to at least go out and buy them a drink first. <clears throat> I've got a pot of hate salve if you want to lube it up first. We need selenium. And now I need to redrag it onto the map because it's done that thing where I can't you can't cross the map boundary. I'm going dun, to, dun, dun. I'm going to move you closer. I know you want to be closer to this huge, ass. disgusting ass. Alien arsehole. Oh, I really don't want to be any closer to this thing with an alien arsehole. Thank you very much. Can I poke its arsehole in there? How do you like it now? Eh? How do you like this? Well, Stop the, it. the thing that looks like the doors on the map is actually a large finger. Uh, what appears to be like a reel and round um, looks to be either horn or bone or, or teeth material. Did someone grow this ship by any chance? Maybe it's because of the um, all the snow mavies this area was a part of like joined onto the sea or something at some point and then, then with all the, the snow maybe maybe it's just got ditched here somehow or oh, really bad navigator yeah really bad navigator and really good wind that'll be fine it's a wreck I've it's heard of things easy. getting caught up in the eye got an eye of a storm like a hurricane and being like thrown out at like thousands of miles away um maybe it's one of them things <clears throat> hey, well look the way i see it is this right we've we've known ben for a couple of years right so he hasn't been here for a few years then we are kind of be out alive still the summer turned in a message uh, so so this is kind of um the map is i'm just looking at the gemma map is a little deceiving the front part okay is raised up one level right uh so the the f that's actually a shelf no, that can't make. That doesn't make any sense. So that is no. Yeah, the, it looks like there's a three-level structure. That is the bottom deck that you're looking at. So there's a baluster there, and it looks like there's a, a deck further up, and then there's the circular bit on top. But that is out of sight, miles above you. So to to get onto the the forward deck is a five-foot climb over the railings, and that will put you onto the actual. <laughs> creature or whatever the hell it is. Right, I'm casting spider climb on myself. You cast spider climb? I hand over the end of the rope. And da -da 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 -da, all the way I go up and look for somewhere to attach a rope so they can climb up. Right, the um, you climb up to the second level. The second level, are you going up the side of the ship? Yep. Because it's further back, so you'll have to climb up sort of this this location here you climb up and there's an open deck with another balustier and two sets of stairs but the stairs look like they're made of um like flaps of flesh one leading down mm -hmm. one leading up and at the back of this deck you also see another sphincter mm -hmm. which uh is like perched in the middle uh as you're walking up the side of the ship it feels more like shell than metal that's weird that's one weird fucking shit and i don't think there's anything there's not uh, the middle deck has an open cowl mounted to the deck as a forward facing balustrade. the walls are lined with baluster bolts waiting to be used this one is not frozen shut this thing's got two assholes so she is on a different level she's spinning the point I'll drag you onto this map tracy <laughs> So you climb up to the side here, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to share that with you. Again, oh. you see an open door. Uh, the top deck is completely covered, but there are you can see those weird, f like fleshy flap stairs leading up to another deck, and there's a sphincter at the back. Ew. I look round for somewhere to tie off this rope. Uh, maybe he's off the balustrade. Does that look? Um, strong enough to yeah yeah that one looks yeah. like it's more functional so as you clamber onto the deck mm -hmm. uh, you realise that the floor slightly gives under your feet so if you're walking on a huge rubbery mat uh, you walk Ew. forward and then so you could literally climb onto the bottom deck and go through the large sphincter or you can climb up the rope that Lantesh has now lowered over the top I'll climb up the rope yeah, up. okay so as you come over the top you two yeah <clears throat> I'll follow them. You sure you don't want to be left here by yourself, Andy? No, not entirely, but I'll follow them. <laughs> what about you, Aisha? I could just guard the dog. Yeah. Oh. What can go wrong, guys? How long you got? I'll write a list. <laughs> Look at this, guys. And I'm I'm tapping it. It's it, it, springy. Stop bouncing on the thing. It's horrible. 
Right, so it's springy, like walking across the surface of a, a trampoline. Yeah, a trampoline. If we jump up and down, does, does it bounce them up and <laughs> I can't say trampoline. I've always just been able oh, to say trampoline. God, no, don't so start. So, Salmon, as, as you approach the uh, sphincter, it begins to put her. Oh, 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 I'll step oh, slightly yeah. to one side. I'm going to hang on to the rope just in case they get blown off. <laughs> <clears throat> right, so the, the the sphincter begins to put it, and there seems to be some kind of handprint pad to the side. It's like an outline of a hand, but it only has three fingers. Oh. Ben, see if your hand works in this. Yeah, I'll give it Right, you press uh, the hand against the wall. Again, the wall has a little bit of a give to it, as if it's like rubbery. Uh, and then with a <laughs> noise, the uh, sphincter contracts and opens. Yeah. Uh, uh, spinning outwards to a circular portal. I'll follow them. I'll uh, you can see inside, you can see a weird uh, crystals protrude from the chitinous ceiling of this oddly shaped room. Some of the crystals are lit and others are flickering and burned out. Bits of chitin have been pried loose from the walls in places exposed and cavities filled with tangled masses of black tubes scattered across the floor are unusual looking tools. Uh, looking at you is the strangest looking thing you have ever seen in your life. <laughs> Weird. It what holds. Stranger than an arsehole as a doorway. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding on that. I'll turn around and go, hi. Uh, the creature looks at you. Uh, it was peering into what appears to be a panel that had been pried off the wall. But behind the panel, you can see what will, will be tubes. Um, but they're pulsing and uh, holding in its hand. It looks like it's got a bent wand. Uh, but the wand is made out of, I don't know, it looks like... Um, Maybe an esophagus covered in sort of meaty bits, and it points the wand at you. Whoa, 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 whoa. No need for violence. We just wondered why you've left the ship this far away from the water. And uh, it looks at Dave uh, with its unblinking eyes, its weird octopus-like tentacles hanging underneath its chin, and uh, you all hear a loud voice in your head. Subject four, you have returned to us, and waves the wand in your direction. I've come for my freedom. Subject four, you have a very important part to serve on this ship. It's good that you've returned. What part do I... Why, well, subject four, you have to uh, return to the side batteries. Oh, so, Simon, this my... thing this thing is taught and uh, it regards you, tilts its head slightly to one side. I'll smile, a tease, <clears throat> grin at it and go, is this your ship? This is not my ship. I'm the engineer. Oh, right. oh, well, it's just that you seem to have misplaced the sea. The ship does not float on the sea. We... Oh, it doesn't like ski along the top of the ice. That's clever, that. And look out the door and goes, it steers on top of the ice. So you are look, peeking in the door looking at this strange creature. Oh, there's another sphincter right next to you. It, uh, it sort of waves and says, step away from the doorway. Okay, I'll step back and slightly into this corner area away from the doorway. So, um, what, what's a side battery? Why does Burn have to go in the side battery? The, um, the ship runs on psychic energy. It fires sentient specimens to channel through side crystal. But well, we, could are, you not power we, it? we are damaged. Oh, can anything we can do to help? We're pretty good at helping people. Possibly. We the ship has burnt out its side crystal and we need someone to find a new one. What's it look like? It's a small pink crystal uh, and he, he pulls out uh, what looks like what the crystal that Dave has, but it's smashed down the middle uh, and it's all like black and burnt out as if there's nothing there. Andy steps forward next to the sphincter uh, next to Lantesh. Rizzy stays next to the balustier, which only rotates 180 degrees, by the way. It won't. Damn it. You <laughs> can't shoot it through the door. Oh, I've seen Unless one of them I'm before. Off its mount. I haven't. I have. Well, I haven't. Yeah, you have. Remember, in that mine, there was like three in the wall, but we couldn't move them. Oh, those. Yeah, I've seen one of those before. I will. Call the captain. Whoa, 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 whoa. Will you buy this if we can get it for you? Buy, buy this. You know, pale to go and get it for you. I'll poke my head in and I'll say, he means to purchase, to barter. Uh, yes, this is an item we require very badly. And then up the stairs... You see, sorry, coming from down the stairs, another one of these creatures. And it glides, it's got robes on, uh, but you can't see its feet moving. It's on a very small tricycle, isn't it? It is on a very <laughs> small tricycle. It appears you behind you, Lantesh. I turn around. I am Captain Foran. Ah, nice to meet you, Captain. I understand you're in the market for a side crystal. <laughs> yes. 
we it, know where there's three of them. It is most urgent that we obtain this. Will you, uh, what are they worth? I mean, you, you obviously have many riches. I'll point at the ship with a, a vessel of this um, beauty and value. We How have you... the riches of many worlds down on the cargo deck below. Oh, what kind of riches? We have specimens from many, many worlds. Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Do you have any spell books? <clears throat> we do not require spell books. So is there just the two of you? Where's the rest of the crew? Most are dead, but we have some sea morphs. Some what? They've backs into a corner of the rest of you just standing there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm lining myself up, so I've got a straight line of both of them. And I'll turn around to uh, Ben and say, Ben, we should help these guys, right? This is good. Uh, Dravidax pulls out this little box uh, and it's got like a, it looks like an old fashioned 50s Geiger counter. It's got a dial and a button. And he says, This is a side detector. Um, you just press the button when within the location of five oh, miles no. and it will uh, indicate oh. the direction and strength of a side crystal and presses the button. And it goes, Wee! Like that. Uh, to which they both look quite shocked as the the uh, the arrow points directly at Ben. Are they slightly surprised by that wee noise? Because I'm going to open up with them um, burning ray, bur- uh, scorching ray on both of them when that wee goes off. Uh, yeah, they are very surprised. So you open up, uh, so you get a free shot then. I do them one at a time. I There is no way I wasn't opening up at that point because I'm like, this is bad. I can smell bad for miles. Can I put an arrow in the captain from where I'm stood? I can't target him yet, Rick. Can't hit the engineer. You can't target the engineer, L. Yeah, I'm I'm pressing control and left click and No, oh, there he is, I've got him. Yeah. I'll I'll nuke him first. Yeah, this is gonna be horrible. So go on then. Go I ahead. Am, I am. I've got so many maps open that I can't even see your rules. And I'll untarget him and target the other one. Can you see him through the door? I positioned myself to see him through the door. <laughs> right, so as you're pulling this uh. up up the stairs comes Tracy, the strangest little things you've ever seen in your life. And what they look like is they're the size of gnomes, but they've got those little octopus heads that's from up the stairs. <laughs> They float in midair and use their tentacles to pull themselves along the floor. Uh, and the three of them. And it looks to all intents and purposes if there's been a known body and with one of these weird octopus heads. And they're just heading towards you as Earl opens up. And behind them, something looms downstairs in the darkness. So you zap all of these creatures. Can you? Andy pulls his bow out. Yep. Roof back to there. And In I my suppose, Yep, go for it. Sorry. I suppose I shall have to... Uh, well, let's see if we can uh, <clears throat> put a toss's mark on him. Uh, oh, God, this is not going to end well. Fell off a twin. I know. I thought that's a crit, that is. I know. Right, no, rattled. Rattled, you, uh, you shoot an arrow and it skitters off the deck. Uh, now, <sighs> now that you're inside... You can see, again, it looks like the uh, purple flesh of it is gone grey, as if it's dyed in places. Uh, goo drips from the ceiling pipes, and uh, it, from inside it looks a lot less as impressive. Let's roll for initiative, as you have just... I swear, dam- as these are taking damage, is the ship getting damaged? No. Or is it just my mind? No, that's just your mind. Maybe they're damaging your mind. Oh, shit, no, with that roll. <laughs> We're still at me and Asia are still out on the open the open deck, aren't we? You are. All right, sorry, I'm just. And you can see those you. little weird gnome octopus things coming up the stair. Yeah. All I've got is a black map. I can see everybody on the map <clears> and <throat> all the bodies. I've just got a black map, so I don't know if I'm in front of the door, behind the door. Or what. You're in the safest place for now, mate. Trust me. <laughs> you do seem to be. See if it's the light problem. What's the thing behind the octopus things? What the hell's that? It's a dark shape looming coming up the stairs. It's called Neck. It's oh, right. horrible looking. Is that any good, Asia? No. Um, is it worth trying to maybe put me where... Is um, Andy standing right in the doorway? No, no, hell no. All right, okay. I'm standing... Can you say Lantesh? I can say everybody. I just... Everything else is right. just a possibly. Lantesh is standing right in front of the doorway. I was just wondering and... if like, it's maybe I stand in the doorway if I could see the map, but I don't think And it's... in the square... Di- diagonally up and right from you there's three things coming up a set of stairs yeah I can see them I can see all yeah. the enemies it's right. just, Percy, I can't see any, any map but... you, you might have to um, log out log back in log out log back in because you seem to have okay. a problem yeah, right back. <clears throat> so you fire we roll initiative uh, Rick scores first uh, it, it goes in your mind uh, and it runs up the stairs 
uh, makes this squealing noise, runs up the stairs, and then disappears. Next, we have Aisha, who is currently reconnecting us. I don't know why. It's always Bracey's character. Sorry. It's all right. So what are you planning on doing, Bracey? Um, as soon as I can see where I am actually on the map, I will let you know. It works. Try I'm going to uh, attack. Hang on. I'm just logging in now. Depending on where I am, depends on what I can attack. So this is where Flint was. Would be very handy. That's my nickname. Right, I'm in. If you want to share the map, Nourish. Ah, that's better. I can see. I'm not blind, Deck. He's not blind. Right, so which are the both steps going down or are they coming? One, the, the one on the north is going up, the one on the south is going down. And this. But the one on the south, the things are coming up it. Yes. Right. Can I, if I move northeast to there, to there, can I get a swipe over the banister at whatever's cut at that big bastard that's coming up? That is a huge naked humanoid, maybe eight and a half feet tall. Has it got your mountains like a Goliath? It does not know. Right. But if I stand there, can I will I be able to get like a swipe over the banister and hit that? Uh yes, but it can then also reach you. Fair enough. I will smash the shit out. Oh shit. Right, so it misses. And is there anything else you want to do this turn? Um uh, no. Very well. Next up we have the one that Earl attacked, Dravidex. Right, he looks at you, Salmon, and you feel him pushing his way into your mind. He casts Dominate on you. This could end very badly. Yeah. You succeed, and he looks shocked as you have not fallen under his. <clears throat> Damn it. I'll look at him and go, about that, and then I'll do the exactly the 